Welcome to Fiction Narratives. Chapter 201, Odin, the rune was given to me by Loki only Orion could do this. Thor and Frigga exchanged silent glances. The looks they cast upon Orion were now deep, filled with scrutiny. Don't look at me like that, Orion said, spreading his hands. I don't know what's going on either. From the beginning to the end, he had no idea what the god Loki had seen in the multiverse. The god also did not reveal the truth. Moreover, Orion was always confused about Kong from Earth 996. Where was Kong why had there been no news about him Loki, Orion asked, after a moment of thought, where is Kong from Earth 996 has he mastered the power of time? Orion, Loki replied, his eyes complicated. You'll meet this Kong soon. He will be in Sokovia. The god Loki had seen the reality that was bound to happen. Kong from Earth 996 is also a powerful enemy of the Kong Council. Like Kong the Conqueror, he wants to dominate the multiverse alone. Similar to Kong the Conqueror. Orion frowned slightly. Kong the Conqueror. In the main universe 616, Kong had been banished to the Quantum Realm, but in Earth 996, he would appear in Sokovia this reminded Orion of the policies enacted by Baron Zima, which granted mutants legal civil rights. Could it be that? Kong from Earth 996 awakened the X Factor had he mastered the power of time Orion was shocked. Mutant Kong. This was something he had not expected. Mutants, who originated from the gods of the universe, possessed the innate X Factor, a benign compound with unlimited mutation potential. Kong from Earth 996 had not only mastered the power of time but also awakened mutant abilities. This was truly unfortunate news. Rest assured. Thor was full of fighting spirit. Loki, I will join forces with Orion to kill this Kong. He saw the sacrifice of the god Loki and admired his greatness. He didn't want to fall behind the god of stories. One day, he would become the king of Asgard, master the power of runes, and bring eternal glory to Asgard. The disaster has arrived, Orion, Loki said, a slight smile playing on his lips. The multiverse and TVA are in your hands. Loki's reunion with Queen Frigga and Thor had mended old regrets. He was sincerely grateful to Orion. Immediately, a time gate appeared out of thin air. Loki signaled with his eyes. Loki. Queen Frigga whispered, tears in her eyes. I will miss you forever. Soon, she and Thor stepped through the gate of time, returning to Odin's study. But Odin, the king of gods, clad in golden armor and holding the spear of eternity, had ended his hibernation. His divine power fully restored, his presence was overwhelming. His one eye burned with fury. Thor. Odin's voice boomed, where's Orion where did he go again? Odin's majesty was undeniable, and the spear of eternity shone brightly. Though in dormancy, he had not been without perception. He had been watching the changes in Asgard, including the war between the two worlds provoked by Frost Loki. He believed the Frost Giants had tempted Loki to fall, making him an agent of Ymir, and he sought revenge to utterly destroy Ymir's faith. Odin. Queen Frigga's heart trembled. Just be patient. Even though they had been husband and wife for a long time, Frigga still felt nervous when faced with Odin's fury. After all, he was the king of gods, the nominal guardian of the Nine Realms. If Odin were to get angry, it wouldn't just be a matter of millions of corpses. Jotunheim could be reduced to space dust, and there would be no more frost giants. A Lord Odin has awakened are you looking for me Orion's eyes flickered. He knew Odin wouldn't let Jotunheim go, so he came to Asgard to let Thor and Frigga meet the god Loki. Together, they would convince Odin that Jotunheim must not be raised to the ground. After all, Jotunheim's fountain of wisdom, ice crystal mine, and rare herbs were already seen by Orion as treasures in his pocket, capable of bringing him rich returns. Orion. Odin roared, you, the acting supreme sorcerer, have seriously neglected your duty. You failed to stop Loki. And it almost led to the collapse of Asgard. You can still laugh now. Odin's fury was palpable. He vented all his anger on Orion. After all, Orion was the acting supreme sorcerer, the dean of the Rune Academy, and should have considered Asgard's safety. As you can see, Sir Odin, Orion replied calmly, Loki, the instigator, 
has escaped. And Asgard still stands. Have you ever considered that without my intervention, you might have needed to end your hibernation early to resolve this matter yourself the goddess of death, Hela, would have also taken advantage of your weakness to break your seal. Orion smiled, showing no fear in the face of the king of gods. He had become the great sage. Even if he couldn't defeat Odin, he could still compete with him. It wouldn't be a complete failure. After all, he had already experienced the value of top-level entries. Even the rune seeds in his body had successfully taken root and sprouted, resembling a bronze sacred tree, which granted him a mysterious power. Hela. Odin choked with anger. Hearing this name after so long, a look of surprise flashed across his one-eyed face. How did Orion know about the existence of the goddess of death, Hela Hela, his eldest daughter, the queen of the underworld of Helheim, was born with the ability to control life and death, and had also inherited the power of Odin. But she went against Odin's will, and when the cunning rabbit dies, the running dog is cooked. He had suppressed her in the underworld of Helheim, with no chance of rebirth forever. As long as Odin lived, Hela would remain trapped. He had erased all traces of her, even covering the murals on the dome perfectly. Logically, it was impossible for Orion to know about Hela's existence. Hela, goddess of death Thor looked puzzled. Asgard has a goddess of death why haven't I heard of her? Odin and Queen Frigga fell silent, unwilling to mention this history. Orion. Thor pressed, who is Hela? Orion shrugged, exposing Odin's past without hesitation. She is your sister, the eldest daughter of Lord Odin. The throne of Asgard should have been hers, but she massacred the Valkyrie Legion and was suppressed in the underworld of Helheim. Thor's eyes widened in shock. Odin, meanwhile, gripped the Spear of Eternity tightly, his anger boiling over. This past was not glorious. Not only Hela, but also the God of Fear, Kull, was suppressed in the atrium, Orion continued, his smile playful. Sir Odin, you've left a lot of holes for Asgard or rather, for Thor. Mentioning Hela had pushed Odin to the brink, but the mention of Kull, the god of fear, shattered his defenses entirely. Who told you? What the hell do you know Odin's one eye blazed with anger. He held the Spear of Eternity tightly but hesitated to use his power. The Orion before him was different, with an aura so deep it revealed a mystery of knowing everything. The magical fluctuations Orion emitted were no less powerful than his own. He had only been dormant for seven days, but it felt as though a century had passed. Orion, had become more powerful. Another adventure Odin's beliefs were shattered. He had to admit that he couldn't rid the world of Hela and Kull, so he could only pass the burden on to Thor to deal with personally. Originally, Odin had planned for Thor and Loki to become kings King of Asgard and King of Jotunheim, respectively to jointly fight against Hela and Kull. But who could have expected that Loki would join Ymir, calling himself Lofison, and completely abandoning his title as Odin's son on the surface, Odin's anger was directed at Orion, but in truth, he was mad with incompetence, feeling unworthy as a father. How could he have raised such an ungrateful person was there truly something wrong with his way of education doubt not at Odin, leaving him miserable and heartbroken. Kull, the god of fear. Thor looked blank. Mother, is what Orion said true? Frigga's voice was hoarse. Yes, Thor. It's true. Hela is your sister, and Kull is your uncle. You have a heavy burden on your shoulders. Odin exiled you to make you understand your innate mission. My mission, is to protect Asgard and the Nine Realms. But I am far inferior to the god Loki. Thor said sadly. Loki, the god. Odin looked suspicious. Why would Thor refer to Loki as a godfather? Thor began, my mother and I journeyed through the multiverse, where we encountered the world tree and its mysterious keeper. You may find this hard to believe, but the keeper of the world tree is Loki from another universe. He sacrificed his freedom to preserve the multiverse. As Thor finished his story, the words hung heavily in the air. Odin's face paled, disbelief washing over him, a torrent of emotion surged within. The keeper of the multiverse tree. Loki then the memories came rushing back, his own sacrifice of an eye, hanging upside down on the world tree for nine days and nights to gain the original runes. Could it have been Loki, secretly aiding him all along this, this revelation took his breath away. 
he was utterly stunned. Sir Odin, came a voice, breaking the silence. The multiverse war is upon us, and the awakening of the Celestials looms. I have established the Illuminati, and I hope Thor will join us. And, the voice added with gravity, please refrain from harming the Frost Giants. Because I have become the protector of Jotunheim. The speaker's eyes flickered with resolve. Orion tightened his grip on the enormous, ice-cold frost hammer in his hand. His skin glowed with a fierce, blazing light. Fimbul Winter was here. Odin was shocked once more. The Icebreaker Hammer. He exclaimed. You've managed to subdue the Icebreaker Hammer. Orion, you surpass even the Ancient One, Odin continued, his voice tinged with awe. You remind me of my younger self. It seems this era belongs to you and Thor. Go forth, and change everything in your own way. Odin's eyes narrowed, weariness seeping into his expression. Even the king of the gods had to concede that he was growing old. Do not worry, Sir Odin, Orion said, bowing slightly. Without the primal rune, I might still be training in the atrium. I will never forget the help you've given me. With that, a portal opened, its swirling light revealing the distant realm of Midgard, specifically Sokovia in Eastern Europe. Orion had chosen this place as the headquarters for the Illuminati, and he planned to uncover the whereabouts of the mutant Kong as soon as possible. Kong had become a mutant the power he now wielded was no less than that of Kong the Conqueror. Even with Kang's brilliant mind, cracking the secret of Factor X would be no easy feat but if Kong could fully control Factor X and successfully unlock the gene lock, his mutant ability would undoubtedly reach the Omega level. Perhaps it is time to summon Magneto. Orion mused, his eyes filled with complexity. Though the presence of the mutant Kong did not fill Orion with dread, he knew he could not afford to be careless. Father, mother, please believe in me. Thor declared, raising his hammer high, his eyes sharp with determination. Under the watchful gaze of Frigga and Odin, Thor and Orion stepped through the portal, arriving in the courtyard of Midgard. I hope Thor returns safely. Frigga whispered, her voice heavy with worry. Odin and Frigga exchanged a look both of them deeply concerned for Thor's safety. Meanwhile, in Eastern Europe, in the troubled land of Sokovia, Baron Zima had risen to power. His reorganization of the cabinet and the policies he enforced had turned the people's joy into sorrow. After all, the general populace still viewed mutants as monsters and heretics. Changing such deeply ingrained societal views was no easy task. At the same time, mutants from around the world began to converge on the borders of Sokovia, their numbers growing daily. With each passing day, more and more people were registering at customs, and strange, unfamiliar species were appearing openly, causing widespread panic. In response, Baron Zima acted swiftly, establishing the Superpower Research and Investigation Department, known simply as the Superpower Department. The Sokovian government wisely avoided using the derogatory term mutants, instead referring to them as people with extraordinary abilities. Chapter 202, Mutant Kong The Super Power Department is attacked. The Vought Group A brand new building is under construction, its steel frame rising beside an abandoned factory. The foundation is ready, and pouring can begin at any time. In addition to the visible construction, the Vought Group has designed a massive, honeycomb-structured basement beneath the surface a secret hideaway. Mr. Blue's existence is something that cannot be exposed to the light, so Orion plans to send him underground until the storm has passed, letting him see daylight again only when it's safe. For now, the Vought group serves as the temporary headquarters of the Illuminati. Orion and Thor arrived side by side, their presence instantly causing a stir among everyone present. The legendary gods had descended upon Sokovia. Wanda, Pietro, Inventor Kong. Mystique, Raven, Sabretooth, Toad. All of them stared in astonishment. Thor, the burly man holding a divine hammer, was clad in Thorium battle armor. His bright red cloak fluttered in the wind, and long golden hair cascaded down his neck. His tiger-like eyes gleamed with divine power. Is this some kind of role-playing? Or, is this the real Thor inventor Kong asked, his voice tinged with excitement. He had seen a statue of Thor at the 1893 World's Fair, but he never imagined that the god himself would appear before him. I am Thor, the god of thunder, Thor declared. Orion, 
Aren't you the acting sorcerer supreme of Kamartaj? Thor asked, his curiosity piqued. How did you end up in Sokovia? Is this place connected to you? Thor's eyes flickered as he processed the situation, his limited wisdom quickly grasping the core of the matter. Who said that the acting sorcerer supreme must reside in Kamartaj? Orion countered with a smile. This will also become the headquarters of the Illuminati. I'll introduce you to the other members in due time. Just then, a clear, pleasant voice echoed in Orion's mind, luck value plus 20. Luck value plus 20. Luck value plus 20. Orion blinked in surprise could this be Amelia, using the dragon spell to vanquish an enemy in just a moment, he had gained 100 luck points. Tisk. The plan to create 12 amulets through blood crystallization, each capable of automatically plundering luck points, was proving to be more than feasible. He needed to craft another 11 amulets as soon as possible and find suitable owners for them. His entry panel displayed an impressive list, name, Orion. Identity, Acting Sorcerer Supreme, Rune Sorcerer. Talents, one of the smartest people on earth read, capable of what others cannot read, Great Sage plus zero gold, winning by doing nothing is the best way read, Protagonist's Halo red, Omega red, Mind Overcomes Everything red, Invincible red, Time Traveler Pink, Kanja Agent Black, One-Eyed Ancient God's Gaze Black. Luck Value, 48,945.9 I've actually accumulated nearly 50,000 luck points Orion murmured, a smirk tugging at the corner of his mouth. Golden Entry Nearly 50,000 luck points. If Amelia continued using the Dragon Amulet and managed to eliminate General Drikov, it would definitely mark a major turning point in the fate of the Red Room and bring him even more luck points. And to think that creating the Dragon Amulet had only cost him a little blood. After a day of recuperation, all the blood he had used was fully replenished. His blood now carried the energy of the Power Stone, drawn from the X Factor of the Celestial of the Universe, granting his cells ultimate sublimation. Orion's research focus would gradually shift from the macro level to the micro level. Once he cracked the secret of the X Factor and mastered the substance, he would transcend ordinary limits, breaking the boundary between gods and humans. He would become the second new god, following Loki. The battle between the new gods and the old gods would not cease, even if the Seven Domain War ended. Shaking the interests of the upper class was akin to taking their lives. Changing the beliefs of the lower class was like digging up their ancestors' graves. If we want Sokovia's policies to be implemented smoothly, if we want to give mutants equal rights as citizens, we must first break the monopoly of capital on discourse power. The creation of TikTok is urgent. Timely, Orion called out. Do you know computer language now? He looked expectantly at Inventor Kong, who appeared thoroughly human despite his origins. Inventor Kong, born in the 1760s, had adapted well to modern times. He now wore a brand name suit, gold-rimmed glasses, and sported a meticulously styled haircut, giving him the air of a domineering president. Mr. Orion, Kong replied, I'm still, working on it. I'm more than a hundred years behind the times, but I'm confident I'll catch up. Kong was slightly nervous but believed in his own wisdom and intellect. In this rapidly changing information age, as long as one knew how to use search engines, one could learn any subject on their own and he was nothing if not self-taught. Good, Orion nodded. I trust you. But we must remain vigilant. Kong from Earth-996 is coming to Sokovia. I suspect he's a mutant. He might look similar to you, or he might look completely different. Orion's eyes narrowed. Kong was not just a person, Kong was a spirit, a power. In the Council of Kongs, there was not only Pharaoh Kong but also Lizard Kong and Entrepreneur Kong. This demonstrated how complex and changeable Kang's image could be. Mutant. Kong inventor Kang's voice wavered. He's coming to Sokovia. He. Kong hesitated, fear and worry etched on his face. The mutant Kong had been born and raised here. He was no match for him. Moreover, after learning about the X Factor and the existence of mutants, inventor Kong was terrified. If the mutant Kong mastered the power of time and awakened the X Factor, who could possibly defeat him then Raven, Orion said, turning to her. If you find someone who looks like Timely, inform me and the psychic department immediately. You can station Sabertooth and Toad there. 
his eyes gleamed with determination. The psychic department it was his idea. After all, the United States had SHIELD China had the SPEAR South Korea had the Tigers, and Great Britain had MI-13. It would be a shame if Sokovia didn't establish some kind of department to manage all this. In a nutshell, everything was developing according to Orion's ideas. He had intended to unite the mutants. After all, he was a mutant himself. Even though he had the support of Kamartage and Asgard, he might not be able to avoid the malice of this world the malice that had caused mutants to fall into hell, living lives worse than death. Sentinel Secret Service, Trask Industries, Essex Corporation. They all hated mutants with an intense, unyielding fury. They treated mutants as nothing more than expendable tools. And sooner or later, General William Stryker might set his sights on him as well. After all, his blood was priceless, belonging to the overlord of X-Factor. It could guide the awakening of X-Factor. I haven't found anyone who looks like Timely in the database, Mystique Raven said, fiddling with the tablet in her hands. She had directly accessed the Psychic Department database but didn't find any suspect resembling Timely. Perhaps the mutant con you're talking about is completely different from him, she added, her tone thoughtful. This. That's a bit troublesome. Could Mutant Kong and Inventor Kong be completely different in appearance and DNA if so, finding Mutant Kong might be as difficult as climbing to the sky. There would be no way to nip the danger in the bud. I'll find. Kong. Orion spoke, his voice was resolute. Orion, Thor spoke up, hesitating for a moment. I might have to leave for a while. I'm in the atrium with other friends. Thor scratched his head, a beautiful and intellectual figure emerging in his mind. Go ahead, Orion responded, waving his hand dismissively. When I need you, I hope you won't refuse. It is my duty, Thor nodded. Afterward, he swung up the divine hammer and flew through the air, heading directly to the other side of the ocean. Meanwhile, at the Sokovia border, an ordinary-looking, brown-skinned young man appeared out of nowhere. He stood atop a mountain, surveying the entire country with an amused expression. His sharp, Intelligent eyes were full of wisdom, but there was also a hint of sinisterness in them. Give mutants citizenship rights. He mused aloud. Who is directing all this behind the scenes that's really interesting? Just right, I've saved time, and I can plunder more mutant abilities in this place. The young man's eyes grew grim. As early as half a year ago, he had awakened his mutant abilities. As the years passed, he had inadvertently discovered that he could go back in time and glide within certain time ranges. Through this ability, he had avoided crisis after crisis, jumping to different time nodes and plundering a large number of mutant abilities. Now, he had set his sights on Sokovia. Psychic Personnel Research and Investigation Department As long as he could hunt down the employees of this department, he would undoubtedly become stronger. Maybe even comparable to the legendary Apocalypse. Apocalypse. He murmured, a wicked smile appearing on his lips. Where exactly is he sleeping if I could just plunder his power? According to the vast amount of information he had consulted, this pharaoh of the first dynasty of ancient Egypt was most likely an ancient mutant. He had been investigating the true whereabouts of Apocalypse, and once he found Apocalypse's tomb, he would seize Apocalypse's power. Then, he would become the master of the world, and unifying it would be a piece of cake. Bring it on, he whispered, his voice filled with dark excitement. Just keep things interesting. The young man looked playful, and immediately, the towering tree behind him suddenly transformed into a hideous, twisted tree man with bared fangs and claws. He wanted to force the power behind Baron Zima to reveal itself. Only by knowing oneself and the enemy could one fight a hundred battles with no danger of defeat. This was the ancient wisdom he had gleaned from books. So far, he had already plundered no fewer than ten rare abilities of extremely high value. Among them were teleportation, plant control, mind slavery, energy emission, body regeneration, skin hardening, and shape shifting. And his method of plundering abilities was not just a mere touch, it required both hands to be soaked in blood. Certainly, he didn't always succeed in his hunts. He had been killed by his prey before, but when he was on the verge of death, he activated his time-sliding ability and reversed time. Therefore, he always had the last laugh. 
even in Sokovia, it was no exception. At the same time, within the psychic department the first special institution established the minister was deeply troubled by the sudden emergence of mutants. Baron Zima had underestimated the enthusiasm of mutants and the huge impact this policy would bring. Thousands of mutants were sneaking into Sokovia every day through various means. With Sokovia's financial and material resources, it was impossible to implement the policy smoothly. Moreover, it wasn't just mutants with clean records who came to Sokovia, but also super criminals with heinous crimes. They frequently caused panic among the people, using mutant abilities without authorization, leading to disasters. This made the superpower department extremely anxious. Hum a voice shouted. What's going on there are signs of large-scale life forms outside the psychic department. Actually, they're all tree men another voice echoed, filled with disbelief. Who is behind this a nervous wail came from within the department. Everyone's eyes were glued to the real-time images transmitted by the monitors. Groups of twisted tree men were rushing towards the psychic department at breakneck speed, knocking over all the vehicles in their path. Even the signboard was flattened. It was utterly irrational just pure monstrosity. Zima. Someone muttered under their breath. Were these not anticipated before the policy was enacted? Damn it. Another cursed. It's true that the top leaders just talk, but the grassroots have to run around. That's enough. Someone else snapped. Obey the minister's orders. The psychic department acted with swift and resolute determination. Faced with hordes of twisted tree men, they showed no fear at all. This was part of their job. Everyone ran out of the headquarters with weapons in hand, immediately pulling the triggers and firing dense rounds of bullets. Minister Gukakov had a wise look in his eyes as he decisively led the way, holding a flamethrower in his hands, and was frantically carbonizing the twisted tree men. However, despite being on fire, the twisted tree men didn't stop moving forward. The distance between them and the department shortened alarmingly fast. At the critical moment, a portal slowly opened. A tall and agile figure, wearing a black magic floating cloak, passed through the portal in the blink of an eye and appeared in front of everyone. The man who arrived was handsome, extraordinary, and a unique visible charm in every move. Leave it to me, he said confidently. Your name is Kukakov. You can call me. Orion. Orion's eyes moved, scanning the area. Soon, he spotted a figure hiding in the darkness, hundreds of meters away. His intuition was screaming at him, warning him of danger. Even when facing Shumagaroth, it hadn't been this intense. Could it be that this uninvited guest was the mutant Kong mentioned by the god Loki? Chapter 203, Kong's protagonist panel, can actually absorb abilities mind overcome everything. Orion's senses were on high alert. His intuition had predicted something crucial about the future it was clear. The warning in his gut had prepared him for the appearance of the mutant Kong. This Kong looked entirely different from the inventor Kong, he who left behind. He seemed of mixed race. Orion knew nothing about this new Kang's name, origin, identity, or affiliations. But now that he had seen his appearance, Orion was certain he could uncover everything about this mutant Kong. Are you the mysterious ally that Chief Zima mentioned? Gukakov questioned. Sorcerer. Gukakov was doubtful. The situation shattered his entire worldview, leaving even the other superpower department agents filled with doubt. But Orion's focus was always on the Kong that was about to appear, Orion spread out his palms, and an endless frost surged forth, evolving into an ice crystal storm that instantly froze the earth and the tree people. It was as though a cold wave had rushed in, freezing everything in its path with ease. He wielded 20% of Fimbul Winter's power like God of Winter. Twisted Treeman. Level, low level. Entry, Summon Grey. Summoned creature Grey, lacking reason and consumed by madness, it obeys the orders of the caster. Grey entries will the Grey entry turn into a pink one after death Orion wondered, surprise flickering in his eyes as he clenched his right hand tightly. Boom. The tree man ice sculpture exploded into countless pieces, leaving the scene in disarray. But no pink entries appeared, leaving Orion little regretful. Yet, my understanding of Fimbul Winter has improved a bit, he thought. This power combines the forces of frost and dimension. In theory, mastering Fimbul Winter could lower temperatures to absolute zero, 
freezing the very movement of molecules. His followers in Jotunheim also amplified this power. Moreover, Orion could sense that the words he created had left a trace of power that seeped into his blood. It seemed that DNA passively recorded all information. For instance, combustion force had now become his own ability. The material of the dragon amulet had originally come from him it was made of blood crystals. His blood crystals functioned like mobile data terminals, and he himself, like a biological computer, could receive various instructions from these terminals in real time. This was a pleasant surprise. Not even modern science or magical knowledge could explain this phenomenon. Perhaps a unique cultivation system was brewing within him, secretly growing in strength. But Orion also knew that his blood would undoubtedly cause a frenzy among vampires. It was like the ultimate tonic among tonics, and the vampire's approach was only a matter of time. But, fortunately, he had discovered the mutant Kong and checked Kang's entry panel as soon as possible. Name, Marcus Chaudhry. Identity, Mutant Kong, Entry, Ability Absorption Red, Time Sliding Purple, Super Intelligence Purple. Ability Absorption Red, Half a year ago, he awakened the X Factor, gaining the power to plunder the mutant abilities of others by soaking in their blood, with no limit on the number of abilities he could absorb. Time Slide Purple, he can go back and control time, projecting his present self into his past self, potentially leading to disastrous consequences. Super Intelligence Purple, as one of Kang's variants, his wisdom, strategic vision, and military combat capabilities are beyond question. Really? Mutant Kong? Marcus Chaudhry? Orion murmured. I haven't heard that name before. It seems he has little connection with other variants. Orion's was little confused after seeing Kong entry panel ability absorption a red entry that means Kang's mutant ability has reached Omega level. He's on the same level as me. But while I can only absorb energy, this mutant Kong is truly abnormal. He can actually absorb abilities. And there's no limit on how many. How many abilities does Kong have countless? He is more dangerous than the apocalypse. Orion's eyes deepened as he realized the gravity of the situation. If Mutant Kong finds Apocalypse and steals all his abilities, wouldn't that mean his power would surpass even the Heavenly Father and could he even compete with the God of the Universe Celestial by soaking in blood, he can plunder the abilities of other creatures. His target is me Orion wondered. I made an amulet out of my blood. If Mutant Kong comes into contact with it, can he absorb my abilities? I don't think so. He reassured himself. After all, I've crystallized the blood and inactivated the DNA. Orion narrowed his eyes. Mutant Kong. I'm afraid he's more dangerous than Kong the conqueror of the main universe or he who left behind. When it comes to plundering abilities, few can match his skill. This could be a protagonist's template. Moreover, Mutant Kong also has a time slide entry. Going back in time projecting your present self onto your past self like Wolverine in days of future past or, does the present overwrite the past this power is simply unsolvable. Orion's heart grew heavier. In other words, if he can't kill Mutant Kong instantly, even if he's barely alive, he could still escape through time slide, adjust his strategy, and change the past to prevent the tragedy of the future. Moreover, this action would create different time branches, forming new time axes based on Earth 996. Could it be? Every Khan has mastered time sliding Orion's thought became little distracted as thought of possibilities related to Khan. He immediately looked at his left hand, where the world tree tattoo extended from his wrist to his forearm. He instantly understood why Loki, the god of mischief, had given him this tattoo and altered the situation when he took over. Only time can defeat time, and he had not only mastered mystic magic but also awakened omega level abilities and comprehended the primal runes. Like the human incarnation of the Power Stone, his technological talent rivaled that of Tony Stark. There could be no doubt he was the most reliable person to deal with the Khan Council. Hum Orion mused. A sorcerer that's interesting. Is this sorcerer the mastermind behind Sokovia he has the X Factor too? Mutant Khan looked excited. He had sensed the X Factor's presence. This power's level was no less than his own. If he could absorb it, it would bring him to an unimaginable peak. Anyway, he could always go back in time, so there was no need to worry about his safety he could test the power of the sorcerer. 
The next moment suddenly, Mutant Kong suddenly shifted his form and rushed out from beside Orion. His right hand gleamed brightly, instantly transforming into a blade of light that shot toward Orion's throat. It was clear he aimed to kill him in one blow, to cut his throat. Orion blinked, taken aback by the sheer extremity of Mutant Kang's approach. Without a word, he had tried to kill me Kong, Orion said calmly, I have to say, your arrival has saved me a lot of time. A cold aura surged through Orion's body, and the ice-breaking hammer flashed into existence, tearing through space as it swung towards Mutant Kong. Do you know me Kong asked, surprised. Why do you call me? Kong but I quite like that name. Mutant Kang's pupils widened in shock. He hadn't even finished speaking when. Boom. A tremendous energy storm erupted, sweeping up sand and dust, raging wildly in the air. It directly blew over the superpower department agents. The earth collapsed. Walls cracked. Countless glass windows shattered. Even the energy blade in Mutant Kang's hand exploded into a ball of sparks, which were then carried away by the wind. The icebreaker frost hammer smashed into its target with a force that could not be resisted. A violent cold storm, like a mythical dragon, surged forth, colliding directly with the Mutant Kong and hurling him through the air. He crashed into a high wall, which groaned under the impact, a massive dent forming as it shuddered, on the brink of collapse. Mutant Kang's eyes burned with a mixture of resentment and disbelief. He forced himself to swallow the blood that threatened to spill from his mouth, but found no respite. His body failed to respond with the expected time slide. Yet, the regenerative abilities he had stolen worked swiftly, knitting his wounds in less than a second. Power surged through his limbs, and his skin took on a metallic sheen, similar to Colossus' formidable form. Without a moment's hesitation, Kong raised his fist, and in an instant, he appeared behind Orion, materializing out of thin air. Super speed regeneration. Man of steel. Teleportation. Energy creation, Orion's mind raced. Counting his abilities, he has no fewer than five top abilities. The thought barely settled before endless frost erupted from Orion, encasing him in armor reminiscent of Suzanu's complete form, but even more impenetrable. Boom. Kang's fist struck out with fury. The impact sent cracks spider webbing across the surface of Orion's armor, a chill seeping through as if even the armor could not fully resist the relentless bite of Fimbul Winter. Shit. Kang cursed under his breath. Realizing the danger, he swiftly retreated, putting as much distance as possible between himself and Orion. His hand shot forward, releasing a searing energy ray. Boom. The energy crashed against a mirror shield that materialized in response, the force of the collision sending ripples through the air but leaving Orion unscathed. Fuck. Kang's frustration grew. His defenses were being whittled down with each exchange. Orion, sensing the shift, raised the icebreaker hammer once more, preparing to strike. Kang, not willing to take any chances, triggered time slide and vanished, leaving no trace as if he had never been there at all. You run fast, Orion murmured, his eyes narrowing. He could sense the lingering breath of hidden temporal power. Did he go back to a point in the past overriding his past self fortunately, he can't reach the distant future. Orion's thoughts darkened as he pondered the implications of time slide. The power to slip through time so effortlessly was unsettling. Just like the god Loki in ancient tales, Kang's presence seemed to twist and warp, becoming an unpredictable enigma. Only one thing could counter such an ability, the Time Stone, which could lock Kang's time and imprison him in the present. But Orion, though holding the title of Acting Supreme Sorcerer, did not have the Eye of Agamotto and its privileges. He sighed inwardly, certainly, I have the gift of Loki, the World Tree Tattoo. This tattoo, imbued with the power of the god Loki, held the hidden power of time, a force that could rival the Time Stone. Orion resolved to delve deeper into the mysteries of the World Tree and its connection to his tattoo. Perhaps, in time, he could acquire the ability to time slide as well. Never mind, he thought, pushing the matter aside for now. With Kang's identity revealed, dealing with him will be easier. As for the other timelines, I'll leave those to the TVA. Orion's musings were interrupted by the arrival of Gukakov, who approached with a smile of relief and gratitude. Mr. Orion, the psychic department thanks you, Gukakov said, 
his respect evident. Without Orion's intervention, the department might have been annihilated. It was no wonder that in Sokovia, Chief Zima had always acted with such confidence, knowing that a powerful ally stood behind him. You're welcome, Orion replied with a courteous smile. If you encounter any more problems, don't hesitate to reach out to the Vought group. With that, he stepped into the portal, vanishing from Gukakov's sight. Vought group The agents of the psychic department exchanged confused glances. Hurry up and remember that name. Back at the Vought group, concern filled the air as Orion returned. The moment he arrived, everyone gathered around him. Raven, look up Marcus Chaudhry's profile and track his location, Orion ordered as he thought of Kong abilities. I've discovered Kang's identity. Marcus Chaudhry Kong, he just appeared like that inventor Kong shook his head in disbelief. Is this mutant Kong a good Kong or a bad Kong? He's an Omega level mutant, Orion explained, his voice little solemn. Able to plunder mutant abilities. And like Loki, he can time glide. The moment he saw me, he tried to kill me. Do you think he's a good guy or a bad guy? Plundering abilities. I've never heard of such a ability, Raven murmured, frowning as she continued searching. I'm sorry, Orion, but I haven't found any trace of him. There's no information about him on the dark web. The dark web a place where anything and everything could be found held no clues about Marcus Chaudhry. It was as if he didn't exist. Forget it, Orion said with a sigh. Just remember his name. I'll draw his appearance. Don't take any chances. Taking a moment to collect his thoughts, Orion sketched Marcus Chaudhry's likeness from memory. As he drew the sketch of Mutant Kong, the image was so lifelike, so perfect, that it could have been a photograph. Everyone stared in amazement. Orion is an artist too. Chapter 204 Using Blood as Ink to Paint Wanda. Orion waved his brush, and in an instant, he began painting what he envisioned as the Mutant Kong. As one of the smartest people on Earth, Orion possessed unique advantages across various fields. He could master a new skill almost instantly, without the need for study. Painting was no exception. Before long, the sketch was complete. The image of the mutant Kong was vividly captured on the white paper. His demeanor and expression were brought to life, with the distinct features of a mixed-race individual adding to the realism. With this striking sketch, it was only a matter of time before they uncovered the true identity of Marcus Chaudhry. Orion, Pietro said, his voice filled with admiration. You are truly amazing. Even your painting technique is exquisite. Pietro gave a thumbs up, not holding back his praise. Orion, Wanda chimed in, her voice softer. Could you create a portrait of me I'm a big fan of classical art. Wanda blinked her beautiful eyes, her heart fluttering with anticipation and a touch of unease. She was afraid Orion might say no. But Orion only smiled, nodding slightly. Certainly. It would be my honor. He casually gathered ink, watercolors, brushes, and a white canvas. However, he knew he needed to be fully focused during the process. Any noise or interruption could ruin the artwork. Then come to my room, Wanda suggested, her cheeks flushing. She shyly led the way to the second floor of the Vought group, inserted the key, and opened the door. Inside was a beautifully decorated boudoir, filled with all kinds of stuffed toys. A large screen HD TV and classic black and white sitcom discs adorned the shelves. Before bed, Wanda would watch a disc and then crawl into bed. This was one of her few hobbies, a way to experience a moment of peace, as if her parents were still by her side. This. Pietro muttered, stunned. My sister, she won't be in danger, right? A subtle premonition tugged at his heart. A man and a woman alone in a room, with passion burning. He started to say. Devoting themselves to art. Raven, Mystique, couldn't resist joking. Pietro, congratulations on soon having a nephew. Nephew oh my gosh. No way. Pietro was nearly overwhelmed. He wasn't mentally prepared to accept that Wanda might be starting a family. What's more, this was happening right under his nose. Doesn't Orion know how to avoid suspicion think positively, Raven whispered, trying to comfort him. Wanda will value you more if she's with Orion. There was a hint of loss in Raven's eyes. 
Why wonder could it be that Orion disliked her for who she was this left raven with mixed feelings? She had to admit that during their time together, she had developed a strong liking for this mysterious sorcerer and would even rather be his concubine. Value Petro's eyes lit up, and the weight in his heart eased a little. Which man doesn't want to stand out, the only person he could rely on was Orion. He just hoped that Wanda and Orion truly loved each other and that Orion wasn't a scumbag. Otherwise, he'd have to fight Orion to the death. In the room, Orion set up the easel and prepared all the materials. He looked at the slightly shy Wanda, a hint of appreciation in his eyes. Wanda, who seemed barely out of adolescence, had an exquisite and pure face that still held a touch of youthfulness. She wore no makeup, yet her appearance was as otherworldly as the morning glow reflecting on snow. She wore a blood-red windbreaker, her waist was as slender as a hand, and her skin was white and smooth, like fine jade. The curve of her cleavage and the stunning hip-to-shoulder ratio could easily outshine any supermodel. Her face was slightly flushed, her eyes watery, and her ears seemed to be burning. Orion couldn't help but smile. He was trying to figure out how to begin painting, but Wanda suddenly bit her lip, her cheeks deepening in color, and slowly loosened her corset. Wanda. Orion's heartbeat quickened. His nerves tensed. You are. Painting, isn't it always done like this Wanda froze, her beautiful eyes revealing a hint of innocence. Ah, I see. Then I understand, Orion said, trying not to laugh. Please. What was going on in Wanda's little head it was definitely not knowledge. The next second, Wanda gathered her courage and stood barefoot before Orion, looking breathtakingly beautiful. Orion pretended to be calm as he began to paint. He started with sketches, then moved on to outlining with oil paints, and finally added various colors. A stunningly beautiful painting came to life on the canvas. Wanda walked over, took a look, and covered her mouth in disbelief. The version of herself that Orion had painted was as noble as the Virgin Mary and as beautiful as the goddess of love, Venus. The background was a sacred temple, and the interplay of light and shadow, combined with the pigments, left no flaws. In the painting, she looked like a holy, elegant goddess of wisdom, with an expression of sadness and worry, full of pity for the world. Is this really me Wanda's eyes filled with tears, her voice trembling? This is how I see you. Orion replied, his voice gentle. Wanda, the reason I saved Sokovia was because I was moved by your determination and dedication. You are the savior of Sokovia. Orion smiled softly and gently took Wanda's hand. Orion. Wanda gently closed her eyes, her long, straight black eyelashes trembling as she did. Then, her mind went blank. All the emotions Wanda had been suppressing seemed to burst forth completely in that moment, like a flood breaking through a dam. She actually took the initiative to push Orion down. As for what came next. Ten million words could not capture it. Time passed. Wanda lay on her side, cradled in his broad arms. A sweet and satisfied smile played on the corner of her mouth. She felt safe and happy, a contentment that came from deep within her heart. Wanda, Orion said seriously, I will take good care of you. Although the situation had developed unexpectedly, perhaps this was love. I trust you, Wanda whispered softly as she buried her head in the quilt. Neither of them spoke again, but everything was understood. The rapid warming of their relationship had also dissolved the invisible restraint between them. But as the moments passed, Orion realized something. It looked like he was the one who had been pushed down. What had Wanda done to him Orion didn't know whether to laugh or cry. As he glanced at the lifelike painting beside him, a shock suddenly coursed through his mind. It seemed strangely familiar. The style of this work. Why did it look so much like the painting he had received in the foyer bar could it be? Orion suddenly stood up, a storm of thoughts swirling in his mind. He felt incredulous. I painted a broken world, and through the hands of the bartender Jack, it was returned to me. Could it be? Am I the only one who can draw a dying universe entering another time and space through paintings? Orion's eyes widened as he suddenly realized everything. Calligraphy and painting are the oldest forms of writing. Isn't the essence of hieroglyphics to capture everything in the world before this moment, he had been pondering the origin of the broken world and who could have collected it. But now, 
he truly understood there was no other possibility except him. Orion Wanda's voice trembled with concern. What's wrong do you sense danger are you still afraid that I'll get entangled with you no, I didn't mean that. Wanda was on the verge of tears, thinking she had done something wrong. No, Wanda, Orion said, shaking his head gently. It's not your fault. I want to show you something. With a wave of his hand, Orion summoned the mysterious paintings from the New York temple. As Wanda gazed at the foggy world depicted, which resembled a sliced silhouette, doubt flickered in her beautiful eyes, but she also secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Moreover, she noticed that the magical fluctuations emanating from this painting seemed not to belong to a mere painting, but to a real world. As she carefully examined them, she couldn't help but be surprised. She compared the two paintings suspiciously and found similar brush strokes. Whether in color, composition, design, or light and shadow, they all looked very similar to Orion's work. It seems you've discovered it too, Orion said, his voice tinged with complexity. There is almost no difference between the two paintings, except for the subject matter. They should all be, from me. Orion's expression was complicated. He had only just begun exploring the field of calligraphy and painting, and this was his first work. And yet, when he had received the oil painting, it was long before he had come into contact with runes. In other words, he created this painting in the future and gave it to Jack, the bartender, in the past Orion frowned slightly. The logic was mind-boggling, leaving him completely puzzled. But, his magical abilities had significantly improved as a result. Maybe he could even find the location of the Council of Kong. Even the god Loki, who holds the timeline, doesn't grasp all the mysteries of reality, there are still vast blind spots hidden in the corners. This should be the base of the Council of Kong. For example, the dying universe. Just like the female Loki, Sylvie, who has been lurking in different doomsday worlds, the TVA's technological equipment is simply unable to locate her whereabouts. This is a system bug. Orion, Wanda asked, her voice filled with awe. What do you think this portends? There was curiosity and admiration in her eyes. Even though she had already realized that Orion was unusual, her heart still beat fast, and she hugged Orion's arm tightly. It portends, that I'm going to be targeted by Kong. Countless Kongs. I'm afraid the appearance of the mutant Kong is just a prelude. Orion's eyes were sharp as he spoke. Then he donned his magic cloak, changed into a new set of clothes, and stood in front of the easel once again. There was a look of reminiscence in his eyes as he wielded the paintbrush, dipped it in paint, and began copying a similar painting. All the details and outlines were strikingly similar to the original version of the broken world he had seen. However, this knockoff lacked any mysterious power, there was no way to penetrate it, let alone bring it to life. This immediately made Orion fall into deep thought. Soon, an idea struck him perhaps there was something wrong with the paint. How could ordinary paint bring the painting to life I'm afraid, only his blood can do this. With a focused mind, Orion moved his hand, and blood flowed from his palm, blending with all the pigments. In no time, he completed the new oil painting. At that moment, the oil painting in front of him radiated a truly magical aura, one that seemed to capture people's souls and absorb entities into the painting. It turns out that my fate, apart from being controlled by Kanja, is all about my future self. Interfering quietly in the dark Orion mused bitterly. Both the future Joker and the broken world had given him many insights, indirectly influencing his decisions. This couldn't help but remind him of an ancient mythological symbol Ouroboros. The self-eater. It symbolizes infinity and cyclical alternation. Just like the theory of quantum entanglement, the beginning and end of things happen simultaneously. The end signifies the beginning, and the beginning also announces the end. In short, everything in the universe follows a logical closed loop. However, it's not going to be easy for Orion to pass this painting to the past. It seems. Orion raised the corner of his mouth. It's time to go to the foyer bar. With a wave of his hand, Orion opened a portal out of thin air, leading them to a secluded alley. The foyer bar. There is no fixed entrance, any alley can be entered with the right spell. Wanda, Orion asked, a playful smile on his face, want to hang out with me at the foyer bar? A bar Wanda was skeptical. 
why is it in this place? However, after getting dressed, she immediately followed him out. The next step is to witness a miracle, Orion said with a smile. Slowly, he pressed his palm against the cold wall. Magic flowed into it. The next second. A vortex of dazzling light gathered and took shape, leading to what seemed to be an endless void. At the center of this void stood a small bar with a simple appearance and a retro style. This foyer bar was built in a secret realm of the universe, inaccessible to ordinary people. Only highly skilled masters of mystic arts and magical creatures could enter this place. People from all walks of life and strange alien species gathered around round tables, whispering and toasting. Even if they hated each other and were in opposition, they could not cast spells or fight in this place without permission. Because. Bartender Jack was no pushover. As the fulcrum of the infinite multiverse, working part-time as a bartender at the foyer bar was just his hobby. Even the celestials of the universe had to submit to him. Thanks to the fulcrum's existence, the balance of the infinite multiverse was maintained, and everything was under its control. This bar. Wanda looked around in wonder as she sat at an empty round table with Orion. It's amazing. She couldn't help but marvel at what she saw. Chapter 205, Entrust the Bartender Jack and the Chaos Witch Agatha Many days had passed since Orion's last visit to the foyer bar. A hint of amusement played on his face as he glanced around at the customers seated at the round tables. All sorts of magical being filled the room. Soon, the bartender, Jack, approached them, his eyes widening with surprise. He immediately noticed the changes in Orion and the magic floating cloak behind him. It seems that you have reached the realm of the Great Sage, Jack observed with a laugh, taking a seat directly across from Orion. This fulcrum, Jack, possesses a god-level attribute, omniscience and omnipotence. Yet, being able to directly name Orion's golden entry still surprised him. Was this the power of a god-level entry what else could the fulcrum see Orion was a little surprised. So far, he had only seen two god-level entries. The other came from Loki, the god of time. This showed that the value of god-level entries was far from commonplace. Could there be other entries beyond the god-level Orion had serious doubts. God-level entries might not be the real end. Perhaps, above god-level entries, there existed super-god entries or even multiple unique entries. That's right, Orion finally replied. Mr. Jack, two cocktails, please. And, I want to entrust you with something. Orion smiled as he took out a painting wrapped in white paper, slowly pushing it across the table to the bartender. Let me guess, you want me to deliver it to the past Jack asked, raising an eyebrow. How do you know I can do that and how much are you going to pay? My favor is more valuable than ancient coins, isn't it? Orion responded calmly, confident that Jack didn't really care about the ancient coins. After all, as a fulcrum, Jack could create countless coins with ease. Perhaps he opened the foyer bar just to kill time, with no intention of making a profit. Your favor Jack mused. That's really worth a lot, Orion. But remember, the battle between the new gods and the old gods has begun. You must survive into the future to have the opportunity and possibility to repay my favor. With an intriguing tone in his voice, the bartender accepted the painting, then returned to the bar to start mixing drinks himself. Liquids of various colors were poured into professional containers, shaken gently to blend the flavors perfectly. Soon, two glasses of ice and fire cocktails were served at the round table. Jack also stored the painting away. As an omniscient and omnipotent being, the concept of time was almost insignificant to him. He was above the gods, the embodiment of rules, and the fulcrum of the infinite multiverse. He was one of the few god-level characters in existence. Orion couldn't help but wonder, which was stronger, the fulcrum or the living tribunal still. Drink up, Wanda, Orion said, smiling as he raised his cocktail, sipping it slowly. The drink was refreshing and sweet, carrying an unknown power that left him feeling much more invigorated. It tastes, wonderful, Wanda murmured, her beautiful eyes sparkling. She instantly fell in love with the taste of the cocktail, a temptation on the tip of her tongue that she couldn't resist. Excuse me, can I sit here a deep voice suddenly sounded. Orion slowly raised his head to see a dark-skinned sorcerer in strange clothes, somewhat resembling Daniel Drum. 
he quickly checked the man's entry panel. Name, Jericho Drum. Identity, Voodoo Doctor. Entries, Mystic Walker Blue, Power of Roya Purple, Witch Master Blue, Heroic Spirit Binding Blue. Mystic Walker Blue, with his innate pure mind, he has mastered a wide range of mystical knowledge and is particularly skilled in voodoo magic. Power of Roya Purple, he can temporarily borrow the magical power of a powerful being, commanding and controlling wild beasts at will. Master of Witchcraft Blue, his attainments in the field of witchcraft have reached a master level, knowing many magics and ancient spells. Heroic Spirit Binding Blue, he can summon the heroic spirits of his deceased brothers, strengthening his power or occupying the bodies of others. Drum's brother Orion thought to himself. A voodoo doctor this is really unexpected. Given his close relationship with Daniel Drum, Orion decided to give the voodoo doctor some respect. What's more, Jericho's attitude clearly indicated that his intentions might involve Wanda. Acting Supreme Sorcerer, Jericho began. I'm Jericho Drum, but you can call me the voodoo doctor. I came to see you because the lady next to you has the scent of chaos magic, and she's in a very dangerous situation. As soon as Jericho sat down, his sharp spiritual perception zeroed in on Wanda. Chaos magic was hard to ignore, and even other customers began turning their eyes toward Wanda, sensing a mysterious power surging within her. Known as one of the three ancient forces in the universe, chaos magic originated from the first demon in ancient times the god of the underworld, Thun. Who wouldn't be envious after seeing this fighting might be prohibited in the foyer bar, but once they left, it was no longer Jack's concern. It was clear Wanda was in danger. All sorts of magical being were ready to make their move. So, are you warning me or threatening me? Orion's eyes narrowed as Wanda tensed beside him, feeling like she was sitting on pins and needles. Beware the chaos witch, Orion. Agatha is here too, Jericho whispered, a cold light flashing in his eyes. Agatha Orion's heart skipped a beat. His gaze immediately found a pair of eyes in the crowd, filled with greed and ecstasy. It was the chaos witch Agatha Harkness. She was the owner of the Dark Hold, knowledgeable in chaos magic and the abilities of the Scarlet Witch. She had been searching for Wanda for a long time, and now, she had discovered Wanda's presence in the foyer bar Orion felt a pang of distress. He hadn't expected to bring danger to Wanda, but perhaps this was fate. There would inevitably be a confrontation between Agatha and Wanda, but he would always stand by Wanda's side. Wanda's beautiful eyes trembled, sensing the malicious intent even with her limited perception. Name, Agatha Harkness. Identity, Chaos Witch. Entries, Proficiency in Runes Blue, Dark Magic Purple, Magic Absorption Red, Knowledge of All Laws Red. Rune Mastery Blue, as a traditional rune witch, she has mastered the secrets of runes and is skilled in using them to set up magic arrays. Dark Magic Purple, her skills in dark magic have surpassed those of the masters of arcane magic. Magic Absorption Red, after coming into contact with the Dark Hold, she mastered the ability to absorb almost all magic. Knowledge of All Laws Red, she is one of the most powerful witches on earth, knowledgeable in ancient spells and gaining endless gifts through the art of dreamwalking. Two red entries Orion was surprised. If Agatha obtains the power of chaos, she could likely surpass the Supreme Sorcerer. Only then did he realize the gravity of the situation. The chaos which before him was far more powerful than the voodoo doctor, and all of this stemmed from, the Dark Hold. The Dark Hold, also known as the Book of the Dead, the Book of Sins, and the Scroll of Thin, contained a vast amount of dark magic. It was the source of almost all black magic books, rivaled only by the one-eyed ancient god's metal book. The Dark Hold was the antithesis of the Book of Vishanti, filled with corrosive energy that even Scarlet Witch Wanda could not escape. The art of dream walking, a forbidden technique among forbidden techniques, allowed one to project their soul into the multiverse, controlling the actions of other beings. Wanda from Earth 616 had wiped out the Illuminati on Earth 838 through this very art, causing a collision between their worlds. Such a collision was irreversible either both universes perished, or one had to be sacrificed to save the other. The key issue was that collision events didn't occur just once. Earth 838 had survived one such event, but it faced the approach of a second. Agatha's dream walking had likely taken her through countless realms, learning dark knowledge beyond measure. The severity of this couldn't be overstated. 
Acting Supreme Sorcerer Orion Agatha sneered as she approached. You seem to know me. And Jericho, it's really rude to talk about a lady behind her back. It's not at all endearing. Seeing that she had been exposed, Agatha simply walked over and sat down openly, her eyes never leaving Wanda. The chaos magic she had been seeking was finally before her. If it weren't for the rules of the foyer bar and the presence of Jack, she would have seized the power of chaos on the spot. Once she mastered it, she would gain full control over the dark hold, cast the ancient magic recorded within, and replace the supreme sorcerer to rule the sorcerer world. As for the voodoo doctor and Orion Agatha didn't take them seriously at all. Even the ancient one couldn't take away the dark book. What's more, he's just an acting sorcerer supreme. Agatha, came a voice, breaking her thoughts. You are really brave. Is this arrogance, or is it stupidity? The Sorcerer Supreme is not dead yet. The voodoo doctor shook his head, a mix of pity and disdain in his eyes. He has never been interested in women. Therefore, he didn't devote himself to Kamartaj but instead focused on studying ancestral witchcraft. This beautiful lady. He continued, his tone shifting to one of persuasion. How about we make a deal? Give me your chaos magic and I will grant you one wish. Whatever you wish for. Agatha ignored him, her gaze fixed on Wanda once again. Even Orion was nothing to her, just an insignificant little shrimp. Desire Wanda echoed, her confusion evident. You want chaos magic. She was clearly puzzled, having no idea what was unfolding before her. Wanda, Orion's voice cut through the tension, sharp and urgent. Don't believe her lies. She will drain your magic power, including your lifespan. Chaos magic is connected to your flesh and blood. Without it, you will die. His eyes were sharp, his anger barely suppressed. Agatha from Earth 996 was truly arrogant. He hadn't felt neglected in a long time, and yet she had managed to do just that. I'm talking to Wanda. Agatha snapped, her voice cold. Are you allowed to interrupt? She frowned not even considering Orion as a human being. It was understandable she had been holding the dark book for many years, her mind corroded and infected, and it was almost irreversible. What a coincidence, Orion responded with a smile, his voice dripping with sarcasm. I just like to butt in. The words hadn't even left his lips when Agatha's beautiful eyes widened with a hint of hatred. Her anger flared. This was the first time she had heard such a vulgar joke. Everyone came Jack's voice, calm and steady as he wiped down the plates. If you need to fight, then go outside and fight. No fighting is allowed in the foyer bar. As soon as the words were spoken, Agatha immediately suppressed her anger, though she kept looking at Orion coldly. Let's go, Orion said, turning to Wanda. Wanda, let's go home. He took her hand and left the foyer bar, guiding her straight back to the quiet and secluded alley. I will find you. Agatha hissed after them, her voice dripping with venom. Scarlet Witch. She swallowed her anger, her eyes flashing with a sinister and cold light. Just at that moment, a portal appeared out of thin air in front of Orion and Wanda. The voodoo doctor reappeared, stepping through the portal with a determined expression. Orion, he began, his tone serious, I still have something to say. I formed a group called the Midnight Suns. You are welcome to join us. Chapter 206, Midnight S. Sons. Big events are coming. Orion, the vampires are on the move, the voodoo doctor began to talk, his tone heavy with urgency. You may not know this, but a mysterious artifact has surfaced in the hands of a lady in Macau. His eyes narrowed as he continued, it's called the Dragon Amulet. The amulet, crafted from a material unlike any other, carried the scent of blood and pulsed with extraordinary magic. Its power was undeniable, capable of unleashing explosive flames. Naturally, such a powerful artifact had caught the attention of the vampires. The whereabouts of the other eleven amulets are unknown, the Dr. Voodoo continued, his voice a grim whisper. The vampire clan is hunting for them, seeking to gather all twelve amulets, to awaken the blood god, and claim the power of Erebus. Orion's heart pounded in his chest. The weight of the situation bore down on him as the voodoo doctor pressed on, Midnight Suns need your help. The story hung in the air between them, 
a tale of ancient power and looming danger. The voodoo doctor's eyes, serious and intense, left no room for doubt. The Midnight Suns had already been established in secret, a shadowy group tasked with handling the supernatural and magical threats that plagued the atrium. Even Kamartaj had acknowledged their existence, with Daniel Drum frequently reaching out to voodoo doctors to combat the dark forces that threatened to overrun their world. Now, the sudden appearance of the dragon amulet and the whispers of a mysterious lord had drawn the Midnight Sun's attention. When they learned that eleven other amulets were scattered across the globe, they realized the magnitude of the danger they faced. In fact, the Blade Warrior had already encountered the dragon amulet. The scent of blood it emitted was unmistakable, reinforcing the truth behind the legend of the mysterious lord. Dragon amulet Orion murmured, his mind racing. Vampires. Confusion clouded his thoughts. As the creator of the dragon amulet, he had foreseen the emergence of vampires, but he never imagined that the infamous Midnight Suns would be drawn into the fray. Gather all twelve amulets and awaken Erebus the idea was absurd, a dream conjured by desperate creatures. What the vampires didn't know, however, was that the other eleven amulets hadn't even been created yet. Orion chuckled to himself. What were they trying to wake up? But as the voodoo doctor spoke, Orion's sharp mind began to see the situation differently. A business opportunity was emerging before him, one that could grant him an enormous amount of luck value. The Midnight Suns now that was intriguing. Orion found himself captivated by this mysterious group. He sensed that he could use them, perhaps even turn them into his allies, his wingmen. The incident in the foyer bar had already placed Wanda in danger. He couldn't afford to wait idly by. If he could bring the Midnight Suns to Sokovia, they would serve as a formidable shield, a layer of protection that might even make the Chaos Witch hesitate. If the Voodoo Doctor could track him down, surely Agatha, with the Dark Hold in her possession, could do the same. Without hesitation, Orion nodded, his decision made. I agree to join the Midnight Suns, he said firmly. But I can't guarantee that this matter can be resolved. He paused curiosity sparking in his eyes. And, where is the base of the Midnight Suns take me there? I want to see it for myself. The voodoo doctor shook his head slowly, an enigmatic smile playing on his lips. The Midnight Suns don't have a base, he explained. They handle their own affairs, only coming together in the face of a major crisis. Orion listened, intrigued. The members of the Midnight Suns were indeed a diverse and powerful group half-vampires, werewolves, spirits of vengeance, all with their own unique abilities and stories. Establishing such a group was a remarkable achievement, one that even Orion couldn't help but admire. But who among them would be willing to stay in one place the very nature of the Midnight Suns defied the idea of a permanent home. They were wanderers, bound by duty but unanchored by place. It's better this way, Orion mused, a plan forming in his mind. I have a company in Sokovia. If you're willing, I can provide an allowance, including food and accommodation. He leaned in, his voice low and persuasive. I've also established a secret organization called the Illuminati, responsible for dealing with major crises on a cosmic scale. Compared to that, the twelve amulets and vampires are nothing. A smile curled at the corners of Orion's lips as he watched the voodoo doctor's expression shift from surprise to something closer to disbelief. This acting sorcerer supreme, here, in Sokovia and he had another company. The voodoo doctor was clearly taken aback. How could Daniel Drum have never mentioned any of this? I will not join any official organization or group business, the voodoo doctor replied, his voice steady, though his eyes held a hint of contemplation. The Midnight Suns and I each have something to protect, but if you insist on doing this, I won't object. Orion's smile widened. The voodoo doctor's non-refusal was as good as an agreement. Come on, then, Orion said, a glint of excitement in his eyes. I'll find another place to establish the headquarters of the Midnight Suns. They'll need a safe place to stay, and it'll be free of charge. He knew what he was doing. Free of charge free was the most expensive. If he provided them with a base, it wasn't unreasonable to expect them to handle some dirty work in return. Without giving the voodoo doctor time to respond, Orion opened a portal, taking them directly to Sokovia. They arrived near a ruined gothic tower, its dark silhouette looming against the sky. This tower had once belonged to the blasphemy cult, 
but with its destruction, the area had become deserted. Few ventured within a hundred miles of the place, making it the perfect location for the Midnight Sun's base. The tower's interior was filled with countless carvings and mysterious symbols, remnants of its dark past. If the Oracle Priest were to return and reawaken the seven-pointed star array, it could spell disaster. But with the Midnight Suns occupying this place, Orion felt one less worry burdening his shoulders. As for the ownership of the Gothic Tower, a simple word to Baron Zima would resolve that issue. This place. The voodoo doctor murmured, his voice tinged with recognition. It has an evil aura, the mark of a beholder. Is this the territory of the blasphemy cult? That's right, Orion confirmed, his tone matter of fact. I destroyed this place before, but it still didn't feel safe. With the protection of the Midnight Suns, I can rest easier. He gave a nod, impressed by the voodoo doctor's keen insight. It was no wonder he had a reputation as a legendary wizard. In some universes, Dr. Voodoo had even replaced Dr. Strange as the Sorcerer Supreme. His power was unmistakable. How many members are there in the Midnight Suns? Orion asked, a spark of curiosity igniting in his eyes. Let's get acquainted. If humanoids and werewolves existed in this world, Orion thought, then surely the Bloodstone family did too. Bloodstone, a name synonymous with nearly limitless supernatural powers, capable of controlling and enslaving supernatural beings. Some said it was on PAR with the Infinity Stones. The origin of the Bloodstone was shrouded in mystery, with different stories in different timelines. But Orion had a hunch that perhaps the Bloodstone was also a crystal formed from the condensation of blood. The Midnight Suns team, excluding me, still has six members, the Voodoo Doctor said, listing them off. Night Werewolf, Man-Thing, Blade, Ghost Rider, Moon Knight, Hellstorm. He paused, a strange look crossing his face. Are you sure you want to meet them? Orion's smile didn't waver. Though the members of the Midnight Suns were bound to confront major crises in the supernatural world, they were far from a united front. Disagreements and clashes were common, especially between Werewolf by Night and Blade, whose instincts and racial differences often put them at odds. Hellstorm's ties to the Lord of Hell, Ghost Rider's power from Mephisto, Moon Knight's devotion to Kanju, they were a volatile mix. And Man-Thing, just the name alone spoke of its monstrous nature. Gathering this group of misfits had been no easy feat, and keeping them together was an ongoing challenge. But Orion wasn't deterred. He leaned back, his expression calm and assured. Midnight Suns, can't stand the light what's the problem? Aren't we going to discuss the dragon amulet? Orion's voice cut through the tension in the room. Use this cause to summon the Midnight Suns, the voodoo doctor instructed with a calm certainty, his eyes meeting Orion's. Wanda's beautiful eyes flashed with understanding as her mind lit up with the possibilities. All right, she agreed softly. The voodoo doctor sighed inwardly. He felt helpless against the tide of event. With a weary gesture, he summoned his magic, reaching out to contact the members of Midnight Suns about the twelve amulets. Soon, a cloud of magical smoke began to swirl in the air. The atmosphere grew heavy, charged with an ominous energy. Moments later, a portal of light opened in the middle of the room, its edges crackling with power. The first figure to emerge was unmistakable a Midnight Sun, clad in a leather jacket, long boots and chains draped across his chest. Hellfire blazed from his skull, where a head should have been. Without hesitation, he stepped directly into the Gothic Tower. Jericho. The voice that came from the flaming skull was deep and gravelly. What did you summon me for and who are these two his empty eye sockets, filled with hellfire, swept over Orion and Wanda? A hint of doubt lingered on his skeletal face, a face that would haunt anyone's nightmares. Wanda instinctively covered her mouth, her eyes wide with disbelief. What kind of magical creature is this she thought, her mind struggling to comprehend what stood before her. Johnny, the voodoo doctor said, his tone respectful yet firm. This is Kamartaj's acting sorcerer supreme and his lover. But don't underestimate her, she is the host of chaos magic. The names hung in the air, each one laden with meaning. Acting Supreme Sorcerer Scarlet Witch Johnny's flaming eyes flared as he laughed, the sound strange and eerie. Dot are you all members of the Midnight Suns Johnny continued, his tone tinged with sarcasm. You really care about the Midnight Suns, don't you? 
Orion's gaze flickered, and almost unconsciously, he checked the information panel on the figure before him. Name, Johnny Blaze. Identity, Ghost Rider. Entry, Ghost Motorcycle Blue, Hellfire Purple, Eye of Judgment Purple, Immortality Red. Ghost Motorcycle Blue, as a knight, he must have a mount. He endows the motorcycle with the fire of hell, turning it into a soul chariot with independent consciousness. Hellfire Purple, a flame from the depths of hell, with enchanted powers that can burn any substance, not bound by the laws of nature, and immune to water and vacuum environments. Eye of Judgment Purple, Ghost Rider can release Hellfire through his eyes, damaging the soul directly. He can see all the crimes committed by the opponent in the past, and those who are extremely evil will fall into hell. Immortality Red, as the spirit of vengeance created by God, he can almost instantly reconstruct his body no matter what kind of damage or blow he suffers. But if he is abandoned by the spirit of vengeance, he will lose this ability. Immortality Orion muttered, his eyes widening in surprise. This entry is really rare. The spirit of vengeance. Orion's thoughts raced as he processed the information. By all rights, this ability should have been classified as a golden entry, yet. This isn't Johnny Blaze's power, Orion realized. It belongs to the spirit of vengeance within him. The spirit of vengeance, its origin shrouded in mystery, revered as a living weapon created by God. It could not survive independently and needed a host. Perhaps this dependency explained why immortality had been downgraded to red quality. Why did the living weapon created by God fall under Mephisto's control Orion pondered, his mind swirling with questions. Even he was deeply confused by the twist of fate that led to this. But despite the uncertainties, one thing was clear, Johnny Blaze could be trusted. With this ruthless figure on their side, Orion felt a sense of security even if the chaos which herself came to Sokovia. Johnny, Orion called out, his voice steady. You know the vampires are gathering, searching for the twelve amulets. The information we have so far is that the dragon amulet appeared in the hands of a lady. As for the remaining eleven amulets, we need to find them first before anyone else. He paused, letting the gravity of the situation sink in before continuing. Orion has agreed to join the Midnight Suns and is offering accommodation he ruins of the tower right in front of you. The voodoo doctor's eyes twinkled with amusement as he added, it's worth mentioning that food and accommodation are provided. A low chuckle escaped the voodoo doctor's lips. The Midnight Suns weren't exactly known for their stable incomes, and with Orion's support, they might finally have a chance to grow stronger. Free food and accommodation Johnny echoed, disbelief in his voice as he looked at the ruined gothic tower. You live in a place like this are you kidding me? Ghost Rider shook his head in disdain. This place isn't even as good as my rental house, he thought. Leave it to me, Wanda interjected, her voice filled with determination. She stepped forward, her delicate hands raised as crimson energy surged around her, crackling with power. With a wave of her hands, she began to manipulate the shattered remnants of the tower, the broken bricks and stones lifting into the air and returning to their places. The Gothic Tower, once in ruins, was gradually restored to its former glory. In the blink of an eye, a brand new Gothic Tower stood tall on the wasteland, its dark spires reaching for the sky. Even Ghost Rider couldn't hide his amazement. His eyes widened as he realized, for the first time, just how terrifying chaos magic truly was. Chaos magic. Johnny muttered, his voice filled with a mix of awe and concern. I hope you're the one controlling the chaos magic, not the other way around. Chaos magic can control me too Wanda asked, her voice tinged with surprise. She hadn't considered that possibility before. Rest assured, Orion said, his tone protective. I will protect Wanda. As the biggest sponsor of the Midnight Suns, I also hope that when Sokovia is in crisis. He paused, his gaze firm as he laid out his condition. The Midnight Suns can provide me with a little help. Just as Orion finished speaking, a new figure descended from the shadows above. Cloaked in darkness, the figure moved with the grace of a night owl, a crescent dart held ready in hand. As the figure landed atop the gothic tower, the moonlight revealed more of the mysterious stranger. A bright crescent moon adorned their head casting a pale glow in the dark, starry night. On the opposite side of the tower, another figure stood, similarly attired, 
with a bird skull on their head and a half moon staff in hand. Chapter 207 Conscious Agent, Champion Fighter Humanoid Moon Knight and a god of the moon and vengeance, Kanju, arrived in Sokovia, their presence casting long shadows over the war torn landscape. The two stood atop the Gothic Tower, a foreboding silhouette against the darkening sky. Without a word, Moon Knight's figure disappeared into the darkness, moving like a ghost through the night. Then, with a graceful somersault, he landed upright, appearing before Orion. His shroud billowed around him, a cloak of shadows, and he exuded an aura of palpable danger. A faint hum filled the air as the entry panel materialized beside him. Name, Mark Spector. Identity, Moon Knight. Entry, Hexagonal Warrior Blue, Immortal Body Blue, Conscious Agent Black, Triple Personality Black. The details of his abilities flickered across the panel, Hexagonal Warrior Blue, an excellent detective, a master of torture, and a retired marine proficient in firearms and all forms of transportation. Immortal Blue, he appears to be immortal. Have you found a way to stop him Conscious Agent Black, chosen by the moon god Kanchu to be his fist, he possesses enhanced physical capabilities and extraordinary powers, especially potent at night. Triple Personality Black, Mark Spector, traumatized in childhood, harbors three hidden personalities, each with distinct behaviors. Agent Kanchu. The words left Orion's lips like a curse. It seems that the proxy war between the ancient gods started long ago, he mused, as his gaze narrowed as it shifted to the moon god Kanchu, who stood silently beside Moon Knight. All of Moon Knight's power stemmed from Kanchu, the first moon god in ancient Egyptian mythology. A deity who chose to remain in the atrium, dealing stubbornly with all sinners. Wherever Moon Knight appeared, the moon god Kanchu was always at his side. Humkanchu's gaze shifted, his voice a low rumble. Can you see me? Orion's eyes, sharp as a hawk's, were fixed on the god, a sight that filled Kanchu with incredulity. It wasn't until he sensed the breath of the ancient god emanating from Orion that the truth dawned upon him. So, you are also an agent, Kanchu remarked, his voice tinged with a strange curiosity. The god's hideous appearance belied the quicksilver of his thoughts as he began to wonder who stood behind Orion, pulling the strings. The entry panel for Kanchu flickered to life, casting an eerie glow. Name, Kanchu. Identity, God of the Moon and Vengeance. Entry, Ancient God of the Moon Gold, Disruption of the Celestial Phenomenon Gold. The details of the ancient god's powers were as intimidating as his presence, Ancient God of the Moon Gold, the embodiment of the moon's concept, omnipotent and omnipresent. As long as the moon exists, so does he. Disruption of the celestial phenomenon gold, he can reverse the starry sky to summon agents from different periods, but only under the full moon's light, really. Orion muttered under his breath. The pieces of the puzzle were falling into place. As long as there is a god, there is no weak one. Summoning agents from different time periods the conceptual embodiment of the moon. Orion thoughts whirled, and he couldn't suppress a shiver of weariness. The threat posed by Kanchu, compared to Odin, the king of gods, and the other pleasure-seeking gods on earth, was far greater. Kanchu had not only selected an agent but had also intervened in the mortal realm himself. The history of Moon Knight stretched back to the Stone Age a god both good and evil, claiming righteousness while committing countless atrocities. You talking to me Moon Knight's voice cut through Orion's thoughts, his expression shifting slightly. It was clear he had no idea that Orion could see Kanchu as well. No. Kanchu snapped. Fool. I am speaking to this man. He can see me too. Like you, he has received the gift of the ancient god. Kanchu gripped the moon god's scepter tightly, his tall, mummified figure towering over them, his temper flaring like a giant child's tantrum. Kanchu, Orion said calmly, his voice cutting through the tension. You don't have to get so excited. You are all members of the Midnight Suns. The purpose of summoning you here is to deal with vampires. He paused, a smile playing on his lips. Besides, the previous Moon Knight was planning to release Emmett are you not in a hurry at all? Kanchu's reaction was immediate, his eyes narrowing. Emmett? You know Emmett? The revelation that Orion knew of the Judgment God startled him. Since you are also a Midnight Sun, you should stop Emmett. Orion chuckled, 
his amusement evident. The voodoo doctor and ghost rider exchanged confused glances. The name Khonshu was unfamiliar to them was there truly someone else present to be precise, Khonshu is a god, the moon god, Orion clarified, pointing directly at the deity standing beside Mark. The power of Moon Knight comes from him. He's right there. The tension in the air thickened as the reality of Khonshu's presence settled over them. Amit. Khonshu's voice trembled with barely controlled anger. You know Amit since you are also a Midnight Sun, you should stop Amit. Khonshu could not tolerate the idea of Arthur Harrow releasing the God of Judgment, Amit. Amit, worshipped by the ancient Egyptians, was feared for judging humans based on their past, present, and future, deciding whether they were worthy to live. And this was something Khonshu could not allow. Amit's judgment was idealistic to the point of absurdity. The standard of crime and the severity of the offense were all within her mind. Who could guarantee they wouldn't break the rules and laws in their lifetime even an unconscious offense could mark someone as a sinner? Amit would take their soul without hesitation. Yet, for now, Arthur Harrow had not found the scarab, nor had he located Alexander's tomb. I will stop Amit, Orion finally said, his voice cold. But not now. His gaze turned to Kanju, eyes like steel. You have no right to order me around. Control your temper, or I'll beat you to death. The words hung in the air like a promise, as Orion waved his hand dismissively. His grip tightened around the ice-breaking frost hammer, its cold glow reflecting the light of the moon. This ancient hammer, the oldest artifact in Jotunheim, was indestructible, a weapon capable of rivaling the eternal spear, and yes it could even kill gods. Kanchu immediately fell silent, the weight of Orion's presence pressing down on him. He could see it the murderous intent surging within Orion like a storm ready to unleash its fury. Ice-breaking frost hammer. The words hung in the air, heavy with power. Kanchu's gaze locked onto the weapon, and confusion clouded his thoughts. You are not a frost giant, yet you wield the icebreaker hammer. Who are you? Kanchu's voice trembled, shaken by the impossibility before him. This was beyond his comprehension something that shouldn't exist. Orion's expression remained calm, yet there was an edge to his words. I am the acting sorcerer supreme of Kamartaj. His eyes narrowed, cold as the frost he commanded. You can call me. Orion. The tension between them crackled like static in the air, neither backing down. Orion's voice softened, but it carried the weight of a warning. We've just met, and I don't want to create any conflict, Kanju. Kanju's mind raced, trying to keep up with this enigmatic figure. You won't also participate in the Seven Domain War Orion's eyes shifted slightly, a flicker of something unspoken passing through them. Seven Domain War. Kanju let out a small, dismissive scoff. Not interested. He leaned forward, his voice lowering to a deadly whisper. I just want to stop Emmett. Kanju shook his head slowly, disbelief written across his features. But who knows what Orion is truly planning he is unlike any god Kanju had ever encountered mysterious, unpredictable. No doubt about it. All right, Kanju conceded, his voice laced with caution. But there was more to this than just Orion. Four members have not yet shown up, Kanchu noted, his eyes narrowing with suspicion. Are they ignoring your call? Orion's lips curved into a playful smile, one that didn't reach his eyes. It seems that Dr. Voodoo isn't as competent a leader as he should be. The message he sent, no response yet. Ignoring Dr. Voodoo's voice was laced with frustration. Perhaps the Midnight Suns are all fighting, and this world is never safe. His expression grew more complicated, a mix of worry and determination. The next second, a dimensional door opened, its swirling energies crackling in the air. A man, dressed in casual clothes with a beard that shadowed his face, stepped through. His eyes swept over the members of the Midnight Suns, and he offered a small, almost cheapish smile, Am I late? This was no ordinary man. As the son of Satan, the Lord of Hell, he carried a presence that could not be ignored. He had inherited Satan's power perfectly. Space teleportation a mere afterthought to him. Name, Damon Hellstrom. Identity, Son of Satan, Hellstorm. Entries, Demonologist Blue, Exorcist Blue, Trident of Hell Purple. Demonologist Blue, 
he is familiar with supernatural phenomena and has knowledge of various ghost and deity fields. He is the most professional exorcist. Exorcist Blue, he is proficient in all kinds of exorcism techniques, possesses extraordinary strength, has a physique different from that of ordinary people, and has a terrifying half-demon body. Trident of Hell Purple, he can summon the Trident of Hell, mobilize the flames from the depths of Hell, and perform interdimensional teleportation. In the Hell that he controls, he is nearly omnipotent. Hellstorm. Damon Orion murmured, taking in the new arrival. This Midnight Sun's lineup is truly impressive. His thoughts were already racing, connecting the dots. Mephisto, the Lord of Darkness and Hell, and the Moon God Kanja both implicated behind the scenes. Midnight Suns, what enemy were they founded to fight against Orion's mind were full of thoughts as his mind working through the possibilities. What kind of enemy could make these monsters unite vampires Count Dracula no, it had to be something more. From now on, this is the home of the Midnight Suns, Dr. Voodoo announced, breaking the silence. You can each choose a room, and Orion will provide food, clothing, shelter, and transportation. He flashed a teasing smile. The acting sorcerer supreme of Camartage is obviously extremely wealthy. Orion chuckled softly, but his thoughts were elsewhere. Dr. Voodoo continued, turning to Hellstorm. Orion's identity and affiliation are serious matters, and that must have understood. Acting Sorcerer Supreme Hellstorm echoed, his brows furrowing in surprise. Acting is it that the Ancient One doesn't want to hand over the power to you? He looked at Orion, trying to gauge his reaction. As the son of Satan, he knew Kamartaj well enough to understand the significance. After all, the magic barrier had kept even his father at bay, and his own existence was purely accidental coincidental. No, Orion replied calmly, his voice unwavering. I have no intention of becoming the Sorcerer Supreme. He leaned in slightly, his curiosity piqued. By the way, I'm curious. What was your original intention in forming the Midnight Suns? Hellstorm hesitated for a moment, then spoke. Because. The mother of demons. A voice, deep and commanding, cut through the air. The shadows shifted, and three strange figures emerged from the darkness. A long-nosed monster, covered in vines and as strong as the Hulk, with bloodshot eyes that burned with rage. Beside him, a burly black man with dark skin, holding a pure silver weapon, his face obscured by sunglasses and an expression of cold determination. And there was a young man in a suit, his eyes calm but beastly, a predator lurking beneath the surface. Midnight Suns. Dr. Voodoo's voice was filled with relief. You are finally here. He had been worried, but the other members hadn't let him down. Relief washed over him he wouldn't be left alone, after all. Mother of Demons Orion repeated, frowning. The name tugged at his memory, something half forgotten. It seemed familiar, but distant. That's right, the young man in the suit confirmed, his voice steady. Mother of Demons. Her real name is Lilith. He continued, his words like a dark tale spun in the night. In the late 17th century, she sold her soul to the god of the underworld in exchange for endless magical power, and thus fell. Almost all the monsters and demons that appear on earth are related to her. That's why we formed the Midnight Suns. Orion's mind reeled, the pieces falling into place. So, the monsters on earth didn't appear out of thin air they were secretly bred by Lilith, the mother of demons he exchanged a glance with Wanda, and a chill ran down both their spines. This level of fertility, it was terrifying. He turned his attention to the young man in the suit, his eyes narrowing as he called up his entry panel. Name, Jack Russell. Identity, Dark Werewolf. Entry, Ancient Curse Blue, Demon Hunter Blue, Werewolf Transformation Purple. Ancient Curse Blue, his family has been suffering from a terrible curse for generations, and the power of the curse has been dormant in his body. Master Demon Hunter Blue, he knows the habits of various monsters and understands the weaknesses of many demons. He can often achieve victory by surprise and become the ultimate winner. Werewolf Transformation Purple, he retains the intelligence of a human but also possesses the functions of a werewolf, with super physical strength, sharp fangs, and claws, enough to tear apart the bodies of monsters. An ancient curse Orion mused, intrigued. A curse is also a power. 
Orion's surprise was genuine. Yet, in his previous life, he had already known about the existence of this dark werewolf. His knowledge of such things was vast, but still. Shishi Shishi. The humanoid creature standing nearby uttered strange and peculiar syllables, its voice like something from another world. No one, except for the dark werewolf, could understand it. He means. The dark werewolf translated, his voice grim. The demon mother's children were not born by her. Orion's surprise deepened, and he couldn't resist checking the entry panel of the humanoid. Name, Ted Salas. Identity, humanoid, champion fighter. Entries, brainwave perception blue, swamp incarnation purple, shinnick flame blue, brainwave perception blue, he can sense brainwaves, understand other people's inner thoughts and emotional ups and downs, and absorb the power of fear. Swamp incarnation purple, he becomes the incarnation of the swamp and can also jump through space via the swamp. Wherever there are plants growing, his injuries can be repaired. Shinnick flame blue, he can release shinnick fire that directly destroys the target, enough to burn the soul. Swamp. Avatar Orion's eyes gleamed with curiosity. A humanoid is actually close to being a god. He analyzed the information, the gears in his mind turning. However, there was something different about this humanoid something that set him. Chapter 208, The Vampire Bar. A heavy silence fell upon the Midnight Suns. The mere mention of Lilith, the mother of demons, brought a shadow of dread over their faces, each member lost in their own thoughts. Time seemed to stretch on, the weight of her name lingering in the air like a storm on the horizon. Finally, it was Blade who broke the stillness. No, he said, his voice as sharp as his resolve. Lilith's children are still lurking in the shadows. It's only a matter of time before she returns. The others watched him intently as he continued. But right now, the vampire threat is our most pressing concern. You've all heard of the dragon amulet, haven't you? His tone darkened as he recounted his discovery. I stumbled upon it while hunting demons in Macau. The amulet reeked of blood. I'm certain the vampires have caught its scent too. Blade's voice, deep and resonant, carried an undertone of unease. Behind his ever-present sunglasses, his eyes flickered with something rare for him fear. Vampires, he knew, were older than werewolves, ancient and cunning. Their power was woven through vast organizations and rigid hierarchies, with their numbers spread across the globe like a dark plague. They emerged after nightfall, congregating in secretive bars and dens of vice. Blade had tried to wipe them out, but it was like trying to drain an ocean with a single bucket. That was why he had sought out the Midnight Suns, why he had helped forge this unlikely alliance alongside the voodoo doctor. It was the only way to fight back against such overwhelming odds. Dragon Amulet Orion's voice was calm, but his mind was churning. Something about all this felt, off to him. Then, as if in response to his unease, a pleasant chime rang through his mind. Luck value plus 50. Luck value plus 50. Luck value plus 50. The notification brought a sense of relief, a momentary bomb to his troubled thoughts. Was Emilia fighting again the idea was comforting, even as he knew that the danger was far from over. Orion's thoughts turned back to the dragon amulet, the artifact he had created, the catalyst of this whole vampire debacle. He knew better than anyone the gravity of the situation. If all twelve amulets were gathered by one person, the power they could unleash might be enough to resurrect the legendary blood god, Erebus. And if that happened, could Lilith, the mother of demons, be far behind the thought of Lilith awakening sent a chill down his spine? The stakes were sky high. But the potential gains, those were almost too tempting to ignore. He'd found a way to earn vast amounts of luck points without spending a single penny how could he just walk away Orion clenched his fists. No, he wasn't about to give up now. Blade, huh, Orion's eyes narrowed, as if trying to read the man before him. What intel do you have and what exactly do you plan to do with the dragon amulet? His curiosity peaked, Orion summoned Blade's entry panel into view. Name, Eric Brooks, Identity, Blade Warrior, Vampire Hunter. Entries, Daywalker Purple, Super Agent Blue, Demon Hunter Blue. Daywalker Purple, his half-human, half-vampire physiology makes him immune to sunlight and grants him strength, speed, regenerative, 
and self-healing abilities far beyond those of an ordinary human, greatly extending his lifespan. Super Agent Blue, he possesses the combat capabilities of a level 10 agent, is proficient in all kinds of firearms and ammunition, and has world-class shooting skills. Demon Hunter Blue, he is equipped with a variety of silver weapons, including garlic, anticoagulants, antique daggers. He is the nemesis of almost all vampires. A vampire who walks in daylight, Orion mused. He's not someone to be taken lightly. The Midnight Sun's roster, bolstered by powerful individuals like Blade, nearly eclipsed that of the masters of the mystic arts. Yet, with this new strength came new complications. But the advantages, those were undeniable. The Gothic Tower, once a dark relic of the blasphemy cult, had been repurposed. Now it stood as the Midnight Sun's headquarters, renamed the Midnight Tower by the Voodoo Doctor. However, the tower remained empty most of the time. The Midnight Suns, each burdened with their own battles, rarely gathered under one roof for long. Ghost Rider was in relentless pursuit of Mephisto. Hellstorm was busy with his duties as an exorcist. Moon Knight was hunting the elusive Arthur Harrow. As for me, Blade said, his voice breaking through the silence, I intend to keep tracking the holder of the dragon amulet. He paused, letting his words sink in. And while I'm at it, I'll continue investigating the whereabouts of the other eleven amulets. We can't let the vampires gather them all. All right, Orion agreed, his voice steady. But then, Blade's attention shifted. I've heard rumors, Blade continued, his tone low and dangerous. There are many vampires hiding in the city. His senses tingled as he picked up the unmistakable scent of vampires. It was one of his innate talents, one of the gift's curses that came with being the daywalker. There are vampires in Sokovia Wanda's voice was filled with disbelief, her wide eyes betraying her shock. Blade nodded grimly. That's right. Vampires are divided into different sects and factions. Only the Vampire King, Count Dracula, can command them all. He turned his gaze to Wanda, a question unspoken in his dark eyes. Will you join me? Certainly. Wanda's resolve was clear, her expression fierce. I want to protect Sokovia and bring peace to this land. But not everyone shared her determination. We're not interested, Ghost Rider and Hellstorm said in unison, shaking their heads. They had their own missions to pursue. Without another word, they activated their powers, vanishing into a dimensional gate and disappearing into the night. Even Moon Knight wasted no time, soaring into the sky and vanishing in the blink of an eye. I have other matters to attend to, the voodoo doctor said with a wry smile. But still, welcome to the Midnight Suns. With that, a cloud of magical smoke enveloped him, and he too vanished, leaving the Midnight Tower shrouded in silence once more. The only ones left were the Night Werewolf, the Humanoid, and Blade. It seems this organization isn't as united as I thought, Orion said, a touch of humor in his voice, though his smile was bittersweet. When it came to teamwork, the Midnight Suns couldn't hold a candle to the X-Men, let alone any other group. This motley crew of magical misfits was trouble incarnate. Unity the Night Werewolf snorted. That's not exactly the Midnight Sun's strong suit. With that, he and the humanoid walked side by side into a nearby swamp, where whirlpools of murky water churned with unnatural energy. She 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 she, the humanoid said in farewell, as they both leaped into the swirling vortex, disappearing to some unknown destination. Orion watched them go, shaking his head. Blade, he murmured to himself, you're not exactly popular, are you? But he couldn't blame them. Blade had always been a lone wolf, a warrior who fought his battles alone. Still, the safety of Sokovia weighed heavily on Orion's mind. Neither he nor Wanda could afford to stand aside. Where are these vampires? Wanda's voice cut through his thoughts, her resolve unwavering. We must not let Sokovia become a paradise for the undead. Crimson energy crackled around her as she spoke, her eyes gleaming with determination. Wanda had grown stronger, her mastery over her mutant powers and chaos magic approaching the level of a legendary wizard. As long as they could find the vampires, Wanda knew she would show them no mercy. There was no need to chant any spells, make seals, or use any hand gestures. She could display all kinds of abilities, and the power was ridiculously strong. The Scarlet Witch's mission was either to destroy the world or to rule the universe. 
Of course, Orion had changed Wanda's fate in his own way. Wanda might not become the Scarlet Witch, but she could become the Sorcerer Supreme. Let's go, Orion said firmly. It's in a bar right out front, Blade responded. This is a favorite place for vampires, he added, his voice carrying a note of caution. The blood of a young woman is also the best drink. Blade led the way, his skin color and windbreaker blending into the night, making him appear almost ghostly as he moved silently. However, the Blade Warrior was forcing himself to endure. As a half-human, half-vampire, he had inherited all the abilities of a vampire, and his sensitivity to blood had reached an unusual level. He had to admit that the aura emanating from the acting Sorcerer Supreme in front of him made him feel excited. It was actually similar to the smell of the dragon amulet. Could it be that the acting Sorcerer Supreme had another amulet in his possession or did his blood contain mysterious power? Blade pondered secretly. As if seeing through his doubts, Orion told him the truth directly. Wanda and I have both awakened the X Factor. As a half-human, half-vampire, you should be able to tell the difference between mutant and human sense, right Orion asked, his voice calm but probing. Does mutant blood taste better to vampires? The X Factor originated from the Celestial. This benign compound, with unlimited mutagenic potential, lay hidden in genes and blood. The blood of ordinary humans was definitely not as sweet as that of mutants. This was a done deal. The key question now was whether vampires could awaken the X Factor, or if they could enhance their power through it. No wonder, Blade muttered, a look of realization dawning on his face. The smell on you feels familiar to me. Mutant's blood is indeed stronger than that of ordinary humans. The vampire elders are keen on hunting mutants. The Prime Minister of Sokovia has not only attracted mutants but also vampires. But. Blade's expression hardened. I can still handle it. Blade's face showed a look of determination. Immediately, he led Orion and Wanda to the door of a bar in the small town of Sokovia. He pushed open the door. Inside the bar, dynamic and exciting dance music blared. The whistling sound waves made Wanda feel very uncomfortable. As soon as the three of them stepped into the bar, they could clearly sense that countless gloomy eyes were fixed on them. The scent of the X Factor in the air made the vampires reveal their fangs, a hint of greed appearing on their faces. Fortunately, we discovered the existence of vampires in time. Orion thought, secretly rejoicing. If vampires were allowed to continue to grow and become stronger, Sokavi would become a vampire lair. Immediately, Orion checked the entry panel of a random vampire. Name, Saren Meyer. Identity, Vampire Servant. Entry, Extreme Thirst for Blood Green, Vampire Instinct Green. Extremely thirsty for blood green, as a member of the vampire community, he cannot obtain energy through food. His only food is human blood. Blood Instinct Green, his physique, endurance, speed, and reaction have all reached the limits of human capabilities. Blood Race Instinct Human Limit Orion moved his eyes as he glanced at the all-present vampires. This group of vampire servants, both men and women, had pale skin and appeared no different from ordinary people. But in fact, they were not the same species at all, hiding in dark environments all year round. Sunlight was the natural enemy of all vampires. Only a few vampires could resist the erosion of sunlight. The origin of vampires was even more closely tied to the dark hold. This was a race of monsters created by the god of the underworld, Thun. The first vampire in history could be traced back to prehistoric mythology, Varna, the legendary vampire lord. As for Dracula's situation, Orion had no idea. He really hadn't read about Count Dracula, but in this Earth 996, with both the Avengers and the X-Men, the existence of vampires was bound to become a major concern. Not even a decent fellow Blade muttered, his disappointment evident as he gripped his long knife tightly. After realizing that most of the customers in the bar were vampire servants, Blade immediately wielded his silver weapons. Silver, garlic, teak, cross, holy water they were all the nemesis of vampires. Certainly, in comparison, the effects of mysticism and chaos magic were even more significant. Wanda took the initiative, gathering a bright red light in her hands. This energy turned into an energy storm, instantly covering the entire bar. All the vampires were shocked. They thought their prey had fallen into their trap, 
but instead, they had hit a wall. Daywalker. One of the vampires cried out in fear. He's a vampire hunter. Another shouted in panic. Damn it. One hissed, their voice trembling. Why is he in Sokovia? The vampires panicked, fleeing towards the exit. Some, relying on their extraordinary physiques, showed their claws and fangs. Their faces were extremely hideous. There were also different classes of vampires. They were roughly divided into prince, duke, marquis, earl, viscount, and baron. Below the baron, almost all were servants, with limited physical strength and poor at using witchcraft. They were mere consumables in the eyes of the vampire nobles. You could make as many as you wanted. This ordinary bar belonged to a vampire baron. Name, Mozambique. Identity, Vampire Baron. Entries, Bloodline Function Blue, Immortality Blue. Bloodline Functions Blue, as a Vampire Baron, his abilities were far superior to those of ordinary vampires, and he could also transform normal humans into his servants. Immortal Blue, he seemed to be invincible. Have you thought of a solution Mozambique stood on the second floor, looking at everything he had worked so hard to build. Under the combined actions of Blade and Wanda, it was being completely destroyed. He became immediately furious, his pupils turning blood red, his body even showing some characteristics of a bat. Daywalker. Mozambique hissed, his voice filled with malice. Your good days are coming to an end. The great blood god is about to revive. Even if you destroy everything I have, I will make you pay double. Vampire Baron Mozambique had a fierce look in his eyes. His entire body lifted off the ground, but instead of attacking Blade, he rushed directly at Wanda. He had smelled the breath of the X-Factor. Blood containing the X-Factor could also make vampires stronger, and maybe even promote their titles. Get lost. Wanda cried out, her voice a command. The chaos magic turned into an energy tsunami, instantly blowing the vampire baron away. However, the vampire baron's ability to withstand blows was strong. He merely flipped over and flew down again, his fangs shone with a metallic luster, sharp enough to pierce through steel plates. Facing the siege of the vampire baron and numerous servants, Blade was busy with his own affairs, and Wanda, feeling a flash of nervousness, was about to be surrounded. In that moment, a blood-red flying sword, shining brightly and as powerful as a streak of silk, broke through the air in the blink of an eye. A deafening whistling sound echoed faintly. Phew. The sound of an explosion resounded in all directions. The blood-red flying sword directly pierced through the vampire noble's forehead, passing through the skull, and directly destroyed the vampire's brain. This also turned the vampire baron into a pile of magical ash, completely dissipating. Kill Mozambique. Luck value plus 100. A row of colorful bubbles came into view. Only 100 points of luck Orion curled his lips secretly, slightly disappointed. It's just at the advanced level. Immediately, under the control of his mind, the blood-red flying sword drew a graceful arc in the air like a whistle arrow. With a flash of light, in the blink of an eye, all the vampire servants were killed. In less than a second, the scene was cleared instantly. Luck value plus 50. Luck value plus 50. Luck value plus 50. The beautiful and pleasant voice of the system broadcast echoed continuously. The vampires, madly slaughtered by the blood-red flying swords, turned into a ball of sparks and scattered, leaving no trace. This also made Orion secretly regretful. What a loss. Chapter 209, Creating the Sheep Amulet and Entering Wanda's Dream. Vampires possess a super self-healing ability. If they cannot be killed directly, they can be revived by sucking blood. This made them a formidable enemy, one that Blade and other exorcists knew well. They spared no effort in their battles, ensuring that a vampire was reduced to ashes before Blade could feel at ease. Yet, this also caused Orion to lose a large number of pink entries. However, he didn't feel too sorry about it. After all, he could have created pink entries long ago, but entries from vampires would only create more vampires something that would undoubtedly cause him trouble. As expected, he is the acting supreme sorcerer, Blade murmured, his gaze fixed on Orion. His eyes narrowed as he examined the flying sword. This flying sword. Is it also made of blood? 
The smell emitted by the blood-colored flying sword and the dragon amulet was almost exactly the same. Blade's suspicions grew. Could it be that the acting supreme sorcerer before him had already cracked the secret of the amulet? The thought was preposterous Blade couldn't believe that the amulet was crafted by Orion. The idea was completely beyond his understanding. He was convinced the amulet had to come from a mysterious lord. This is a magic artifact I got by accident, Orion said nonchalantly. I don't know the specific origins either, he added, fabricating a reason as naturally as breathing. Blade nodded, though doubt lingered in his mind. Then it seems that your weapon is also related to the mysterious lord, he said, his tone cautious. Orion, I hope you don't underestimate the power of the mysterious lord. Demon lords almost never actually die, Blade hinted, drawing on his extensive knowledge as a demon hunting expert. Thanks for your reminder, Orion replied, a slight smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. He had no intention of revealing the true origins of the dragon amulet and the blood sword. These secrets were his alone. For now, the vampires in Sokovia had been dealt with. However, the vampire menace still lurked in the shadows across the world, and Orion knew it would be extremely difficult to completely wipe out their clan. Vampires were like a plague contagious and relentless. Count Dracula, in particular, was more mysterious and powerful than most could imagine. Even the death of the god of creation hadn't been enough to completely destroy him. The thought of Dracula's potential resurgence sent a warning to Orion. If the vampire clan didn't resurrect the blood god but instead awakened Dracula, Sokovia would be in grave danger. After all, Sokovia was located in Eastern Europe, on the Balkan Peninsula the very region where Count Dracula had once ruled Transylvania. The proximity of these two countries, sharing a border, was cause for concern. And it wasn't just Dracula that worried Orion. Dr. Doom's homeland, Latveria, was also adjacent to Sokovia. The region's unique geographical position had made it a target for major powers throughout history. Anyone could see that if Orion wanted to lead the people of Sokovia to rise, he had to first clear the obstacles on the Balkan Peninsula. The Earth's resources were limited, and an increase in Sokovia's population meant a decrease in resources in other countries. This could lead to a shortage of materials per capita and, inevitably, inflation and currency depreciation in major neighboring nations. So, accepting displaced mutants was only the first step of Orion's plan. His next move was to use the isotopes of the Power Stone to create an arc reactor, one that could completely replace coal, oil, and natural gas. With this technological barrier, he would dominate the Balkan Peninsula. Who says that only force can rule a region Orion thought? Look at Europeans formed alliances like the European Community, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Brikes, and the Five Eyes Alliance. Orion planned to follow suit, gradually eroding the Balkan Peninsula through his unique method. He had the technology, the talents, and the resources. As for what the great powers might think Orion didn't care. Dignity, he believed, lay only at the edge of a sword, and truth only within the range of a cannon. He needed to manage a territory that belonged to him alone. Now that we've dealt with the vampires here, Blade said, breaking the silence, I should leave too. He turned to Orion with a rare smile. Orion, I'm so glad you're a Midnight Suns. Blade's smile was brief and bittersweet. Without waiting for a reply, he walked back in the direction he had come from, his figure gradually disappearing into the darkness. It was as if he had long been accustomed to hiding his achievements and fame. As a half-human, half-vampire, Blade suffered discrimination from both races. Only among Midnight Suns did he seem relatively normal. Orion, Wanda's soft voice called out, pulling him from his thoughts. We should take a rest. Her cheeks were flushed, her meaning clear. Good, Orion replied, smiling. With a flick of his wrist, a portal opened out of thin air, and the two of them stepped through, returning to their room. To ensure their privacy and safety, Orion set up a hidden magic array, weaving various secret patterns and symbols into the space, improving the sound insulation and privacy. Wanda gently closed her eyes, a silent invitation, as if ready for him to pick her. The details of what happened next were better left unspoken. When Orion finally glanced at the time, it was almost dawn. Despite their physical strength as Omega mutants, which far surpassed that of ordinary people, he was clearly the one with more stamina. 
Wanda had fallen into a deep sleep, a sweet smile lingering on her lips as she dreamt of their time together. But Orion's eyes remained clear. His sleep had been stolen away by Kangja ever since he entered Earth 996. It had been so long since he had a good night's sleep, but this was also a blessing in disguise. After all, the dream dimension was home to a powerful lord named Nightmare, who held sway over all dreams and nightmares. Moreover, the dream walking technique of the Dark Hold could be performed through dreams, showing that dreams were one of the windows to the multiverse, able to peer into different parallel times and spaces. Perhaps. Orion mused aloud, a smile playing on his lips, I should simply create the sheep amulet and visit Wanda's dream. Slowly, he spread out his right hand, and trickles of blood oozed out, like a stream of red fluid. The blood quickly condensed, taking shape, until it formed an octagonal, strange rune stone with blood flowing across its surface. A sheep pattern was etched into the stone. With a deft motion, Orion rubbed out another magic rune and enchanted the sheep amulet, solidifying its power. The pink entry has been generated. Please name the entry. The entry name will also determine the entry effect. Let's name the entry. Orion whispered, careful not to wake Wanda in his arms. Astral Projection Dream Possession Astral Projection Dream Possession Entry named successfully. Astral Projection Dream Possession Pink, this entry is solidified, allowing the holder's soul to leave the body, enter the dream world, and send dreams to others. Done. Orion's eyes lit up with joy. As he merged the pink entry into the sheep amulet. The amulet immediately glowed with a brilliant light, and the intersection of the two different forces created a wonderful chemical reaction, directly strengthening the entry's effect. Sheep amulet. Entry, astral projection dream possession pink. Holding the amulet in your hand, you can leave your body and enter the dream world, where you can send dreams to others and resist conventional soul damage. Protect against regular soul damage. Orion mused, a smile forming on his lips. This is a pleasant surprise. Orion looked pleased as he turned the sheep amulet over in his hand. The astral projection technique taught at Kamartaj could traverse the astral plane, but it couldn't enter dreams. Yet the entry he had created allowed him not only to send dreams but also to resist conventional soul damage. This sheep amulet was as powerful as the dragon amulet. The thought struck him suddenly. Could the twelve amulets be a set the power of a single amulet was limited, but if all twelve were gathered, perhaps they could unleash unparalleled magic power. Their properties were similar to the infinity gems. Time, space, mind, power, reality, soul. When the six infinity stones were combined, they could have a significant impact on the entire universe. And when the twelve amulets formed a complete set, their power would surely elevate them to the status of divine items. Maybe, just maybe, it could awaken the blood god and resurrect Count Dracula. The idea stirred a memory, in the Blade series, the sacrificial ceremony to awaken the blood god required twelve vampire elders to activate the runes on the altar. As for the Bible of the vampire clan, he recalled the fragments of the Book of Erebus hanging in the vampire's palace of eternal night. The book recorded the history of vampires, mysterious amulets, and ancient knowledge. Erebus, an ancient god in the Greek mythology system, came to mind. The embodiment of darkness, Erebus lived in the dead underworld. He had little to do with vampires, yet they were not entirely unrelated. After all, vampires were creatures of the night. How could the ancient gods reject the faith of others the more faith, the better? It seems that the vampires intend to collect the twelve amulets and complete the ritual. Orion murmured to himself, a plan forming in his mind. Then I'll just create eleven amulets, wouldn't that solve the problem? Orion's eyes gleamed with excitement, though a part of him felt conflicted. He wanted to see what incredible effects the twelve amulets would produce when combined into a set. This made him feel hesitant, torn between his desires. He hadn't made up his mind yet. Never mind, he decided, pushing the thought aside for the moment. Let's take a look at Wanda's dream first. A secret anticipation welled up within him. What role did he play in Wanda's dream with the sheep amulet clutched in his hand, Orion's soul left his body. He glanced back at his sleeping form on the bed, as if looking into a mirror. He did not enter the astral plane. Instead, he plunged directly into Wanda's dream. Swish. 
The scene in front of him changed rapidly, bizarre images flashing by one after another. After a brief period of darkness, he found himself in an apartment, watching a young Wanda sitting on a sofa, fighting with Pietro for the remote control. The situation felt familiar to Orion. This was Wanda's childhood her lingering nightmare. It was a time that had caused her severe trauma, a psychological shadow she carried with her always. Almost incurable. After all, it was the day both her parents died, shattering her warm family. I should be able to do something. Orion whispered, watching the scene unfold. Soon, a deafening roar of artillery shells echoed through the apartment. A missile tore through the house, stirring up dust that filled the air. Glass fragments flew everywhere. The warm, familial scene turned into one of purgatory-like devastation in an instant. However, at that moment, Orion raised his hand and pressed lightly. He froze the falling missile in mid-air, preventing the situation from deteriorating further. Oh my god! Irina Maximov screamed, rushing to her children. Wanda! Pietro! Are you all okay? She and Oleg hurriedly gathered the twins in their arms, only to discover the uninvited guests standing before them. A sense of surprise and gratitude filled their eyes. If this mysterious man hadn't appeared, they would all be dead. Move out of Sokovia as soon as possible, Orion advised, his tone firm but kind. The disaster will not stop, it will only get worse. For your children. He handed over a stack of US dollars, his expression softening. This is a small gift. Orion was fully aware that he was in the dream world, a realm where he could easily control the events that unfolded. However, those within the dream were often unaware of, and unable to control, their own dreams. Certainly, if he did something that shattered Wanda's perception, she would awaken instantly. This was something Orion wished to avoid. His intention was to heal Wanda's childhood trauma through her dreams. The rules of the dream world were entirely different from those of the real world. The most reliable way to help her was to ensure she lived a peaceful life, accompanied by her parents. Money Irina asked, astonished. For us how can we repay you? Surprised but hesitant, she took the stack of US dollars. Please, tell me, your name. Oleg Maximov began, but before he could finish, Orion had already left the room, taking the missile with him. His intervention had changed the fate of Wanda's childhood. Irina and Oleg, relying on Orion's gift, quickly fled Sokovia and settled in Westview, New Jersey. This unexpected turn of events made Orion, who was observing from the shadows, feel a sense of wonder. Westview Town. He muttered to himself. Is this the impact of Wanda's obsession projection? Orion's eyes flickered with interest. Wanda from the main universe 616 had come to Westview after the final battle, using chaos magic to create an unprecedented Westview fantasy, where all the town's residents were made her puppets. The chaos which Agatha Harkness had even become a nosy neighbor due to the illusion. But what did all this have to do with Wanda from Earth 996 was Wanda's dream about to turn into a nightmare Orion tensed, but fortunately, the nightmare he feared did not materialize. The dream seemed to be nothing more than a coincidence. Wanda and Pietro grew up successfully in Westview Town, received admission letters from prestigious universities, and came to New York together. Pietro, ever the charmer, changed his girlfriend every week. But Wanda she refused all advances, spending all her time in the library, immersing herself in knowledge. She had an icy demeanor that kept strangers at bay. Yet, the figure she had seen in her childhood dreams kept flashing through her mind. It seemed she had already fallen in love with Orion. It seems like it's time for me to take the stage, Orion thought, his heart racing. Afterward, he disguised himself as a student and made his way to the library where Wanda was. Their hands reached for the same book, a spark of recognition passing between them. Seeing his familiar face, Wanda's eyes lit up instantly. She took the initiative, inviting Orion for a walk, the two fell in love at the speed of light. Their holy wedding was celebrated in the presence of friends and family. They even had two lively, lovely twins named Tommy and Billy. Together, they spent a happy and fulfilling life in the dream world. Closing his eyes, Orion followed Wanda through her dream. In the real world, Wanda opened her eyes with a look of disbelief. Orion. She whispered, 
a faint smile playing on her lips. I seem to dream about you. Chapter 210, Nightmare Lord, Nightmare Entry Panel Wanda looked torn, her expression a mix of anger and happiness. The dream, it was the sweetest she had ever known. In this dream, her parents were still alive, and she had built a family of her own, giving birth to twins with Orion. It was the life she had always wanted, full of happiness and warmth. This dream had reached deep within her, soothing the obsessions and childhood traumas that had haunted her for so long. Even when she awoke, the remnants of that sweetness lingered on her lips. She held tightly onto the broad, strong arms beside her, savoring the rare peace they brought. Wanda, Orion's voice was a soft whisper, filled with affection. If you're happy, then I'm happy. Go back to sleep. The night is still long. Orion smiled, a look of tender care in his eyes. He couldn't deny the power of the sheep amulet within the dream world it was formidable, to say the least. And it made him realize just how powerful Nightmare, the lord of the nightmare dimension, truly was. Nightmare, who could travel through the dream world, influence reality through dreams, and bypass magical barriers as if they didn't even exist he was an enemy unlike any other. Even. Just before the dream ended, Orion had sensed the arrival of a colossal will, no less powerful than Emir or Kangja, and it seemed to have noticed his presence. Perhaps, this was the gaze of nightmare. For the lords of dimensions, their realms were more precious than life itself. They would never tolerate or allow another being to seize control of what was theirs. Could it be? Nightmare has discovered me Orion's thoughts raced. If I fall asleep again, will I encounter him? How did he even notice my presence? This is absurd. Orion's eyes sharpened, his mind churning with possibilities. He trusted his instincts without question. Because the mind overcomes everything. His intuition hinted at what was to come. Nightmare, Mephisto, all the dimensional lords were choosing their agents, preparing for what lay ahead. The entry panels of these lords couldn't be weaker than those of the Supreme Sorcerer. And Orion was pondering, who should he give the sheep amulet to this amulet could send the soul out of the body, plunging it into dreams. And perhaps, killing creatures within the dream world could earn him luck points Orion speculated in silence. Why not give it a try? Outside, the night deepened. The employees of Vought Group were slipping into their own dreams, restoring their energy and vitality with each breath. Orion's lips curved into a faint smile. Without hesitation, he grasped the sheep amulet once more. His soul slipped out of his body, which fell into a deep slumber. Effortlessly, he passed through the wall and entered Mystique's room next door. Raven lay wrapped in a thin blanket, and Orion's spirit hovered in mid-air, sensing the existence of her dream. The structures of soul and matter were entirely different. Orion checked the entry panel again, and to his delight, nothing had changed his entries were all still there, still usable. Even Omega level remained active. Confidence surged within him. Even if he faced nightmare, Orion knew he had the power to break free, never to be controlled. In the next seconds, Orion dove straight into Raven's dream, finding himself in a kaleidoscope of light and shadow, where countless unique landscapes and buildings were forming and resetting themselves. The dream world was unlike any dimension or world Orion had ever known. Dreams, they relied on the subconscious. Reality, shaped by thought. Nothing in the dream world had a fixed form, for the dreamer subconscious was in constant flux. No matter the dream, the rules must be followed one wrong move could startle the dreamer, causing them to awaken and shatter the dream world. Am I intruding on someone's privacy? I wonder what Raven's obsession is. Orion mused as he continued to watch. This scenario, it reminded him of a movie he'd seen in his past life, Inception. Inception categorized dreams into five layers. The deeper the layer, the further the consciousness drifted from reality. To fall into the deepest level meant to be lost forever, as if your consciousness had sunk to the bottom of the ocean, struggling in vain to reach the surface. This state was akin to being in a vegetative condition alive, yet unable to wake up. It was as if the soul had wandered into the lost realm, becoming a plaything for nightmares. Indeed, nightmare traversed dreams through the lost realm. What he loved most were those dreams where the dreamer could never awaken. Moreover, the closer one was to the lost realm, the stronger nightmare's magic became. 
he could upend the dream world with ease, almost as if he were invincible. The lost realm was, in short, the pivot point of all dreams, their beginning and their end. It was the source and the destination of all dreams. And it showed just how powerful Nightmare, the lord of this dimension, truly was. Even when Orion had obtained that mysterious statue, he had secretly wondered if it might belong to Nightmare. Is this the Eiffel Tower? Paris. Orion's eyes gleamed with curiosity. Soon, Mystique Raven's dream world fully materialized. An Eiffel Tower rose from the ground. The streets were packed with people, the crowd thick with excitement as they celebrated and cheered. Raven had transformed into a blonde woman, blending into the throng. Her beautiful eyes blazed with hatred as she slipped a hand into her pocket, fingers curling around an elegant pistol. Watching this unfold, Orion's mind worked quickly. This was the time of the 1973 Peace Accords, wasn't it the pivotal moment in the X-Men universe, marking the divergence of new history and old history? Raven had disguised herself as a Vietnamese officer and shot Trask Bolivar at the meeting. This single act had sparked a wildfire of mutant hatred across governments worldwide. During this period, Mystique Raven had left a blood sample at the crime scene, a sample that would later be found by Tesla Industries. In the distant future, as Orion watched, the scientists at Tesla Industries developed the ultimate sentinel robot. It was a weapon that almost eradicated the mutant race. So, this was what Raven cared about most, was it was she burdened with regret or, Orion couldn't be sure. But as he watched the story unfold, his brow furrowed. Mystique Raven's motive for shooting Bolivar had been rooted in what she saw at Trask Industries. Black King, Red Devil, Torrent. All of them had been reduced to experimental specimens by Tesla Industries. I need to help Raven understand that different choices can lead to different futures. Perhaps this realization could ease her hatred. Orion started his actions. Soon, during the Paris Peace Accords, Mystique Raven revealed her true form, her gun aimed squarely at Bolivar, the founder of Tesla Industries. As soon as she pulled the trigger, he would die without a burial place, and the Black King and others would finally rest in peace. However, a figure appeared out of nowhere, blocking her path. It blocked Raven. Raven. You still have a choice. Orion looked serious, his direct appearance in the dream world catching Raven completely off guard. Orion. What is going on where am I? Raven's will wavered. A person who shouldn't be there appeared in front of her, immediately triggering her defense mechanism. Suddenly, the dream world began to fall apart, collapsing from the outside in. This only meant one thing Raven was about to wake up. But Orion waved his hand, halting the collapse and keeping Raven within the dream world. If he hadn't already attained the Great Sage status, such an incredible feat would have been impossible. It would be impossible. Orion. She whispered, the confusion in her voice palpable. Am I dreaming? You broke into my dream. Raven finally responded, her voice trembling with disbelief. That's right, Orion confirmed, his tone calm yet firm. This is the dream world constructed by your subconscious mind. He paused, his eyes burning with intensity. And I want you to see another future of future without killing Bolivar. Orion's words hung heavy in the air as he let the dream flow again. This time, realizing she was indeed in a dream, Raven dropped her weapon and leapt out of the window, attempting to escape. Her actions were witnessed by the general public, her tired form dragging itself through the crowd as she changed her appearance and disappeared. Her unexpected mercy sent ripples through the senior officials and dignitaries at the meeting, altering their perception of her. It turns out. Mutants aren't just monsters do they also have. Human nature, the dream world's plot took a dramatic turn, and although Orion didn't receive any immediate feedback, Mystique Raven's eyes flashed with shock. She. She was actually regarded as a savior. A spiritual symbol akin to Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr. and Che Guevara. Even the X-Men, formed by Professor X and Magneto, officially stepped out from behind the scenes, worshipped as superheroes by the public. They were even received by successive commanders. Is this another future Raven's voice trembled as she asked. Why? Would there be such a development? Raven and Orion stood side by side in the void, 
watching the dream world evolve. Her beautiful eyes shimmered with disbelief. After all, in her mind, killing Bolivar was the only way to instill enough terror in the world to prevent the situation of mutants from deteriorating further. But this was the cruel irony of fate. Orion had not interfered with the operation of this dream at all. This was the future, evolving spontaneously. Destiny and the future are unpredictable, Orion said softly, his voice full of wisdom. Raven, force cannot solve everything. Force only creates fear. Orion's words were laced with profound meaning. He had realized this long ago. Everyone has a stress response, and the real world's hostility towards mutants stemmed from this very reaction. If Raven could shoot Bolivar, she could just as easily shoot the leaders of various nations. This would inevitably lead to a sense of insecurity among all, compelling them to prevent the rise of mutants. But this is just a dream. Raven smiled bitterly. She couldn't go back to 1973 and change who she was. After all, she was standing alone in the fog, lost and confused. I let you see another future, not to make you doubt yourself, but to help you understand that your every move may affect the evolution of the future, Orion explained gently. Don't dwell on past mistakes, Raven. So Kavya and the Vought group will surely make mutants respected. Orion's smile was warm, reassuring. I see. Raven nodded slightly, her gaze softening as she looked at Orion. The way she looked at him was full of charm and submissiveness, as if. No matter what Orion did in the dream world, she would not resist. But then, Orion's eyes suddenly narrowed, his expression darkening. All he saw was a huge wave of black gas rushing into Raven's dream, like a flood bursting through a dam from the cracks in the dream world. Wherever this black air spread, it immediately submerged everything. Its corrosive nature was so strong that it began to destroy everything, warping the dream world into something twisted and dark. Orion's eyes widened as he saw a tall figure riding a black horse, clad in warrior armor, with long hair fluttering in the wind. The figure broke into Raven's dream with forceful intent. The uninvited guest wore a ghost mask, and the eyes beneath it were full of evil and cruelty, exuding a ferocious energy. Even the mount under him resembled a ghost of the dead, with fire burning in its eye sockets, glaring at Orion with malicious intent. You've intruded into my territory. The figure spoke, its voice hoarse and gloomy. Who are you? The dream world froze instantly, everything grinding to a halt as if time itself had stopped. Even the creatures in the dream were under the control of this uninvited guest, their heads turning like zombies as their faces aged rapidly. Nightmare Orion muttered, his heart filling with dread. You were observing me as early as Wanda's dream. It was his first time coming into close contact with the Dimensional Lord. The Nightmare Lord. Nightmare. Orion's gaze narrowed as he checked Nightmare's entry panel. Name, Edward Haberdash. Identity, Nightmare Lord. Entry, Invincible in Dreams Gold, Incarnation of Dreams Gold. Invincible in Dreams Gold, while in the dream world, his power is nearly omnipotent, but outside the Nightmare dimension, his power is weakened. Dream Incarnation Gold, he is the embodiment of dreams and imagination. He can be defeated but not destroyed. He can also absorb fear and emotions from nightmares to further enhance his magic power. Dual Gold Traits Orion gasped. The embodiment of dreams. Nearly omnipotent, invincible in dreams are all dimensional lords on the same level as Odin. Orion's caution grew, a sinking feeling settling in his gut. He was in the dream world, nightmares territory. If he rashly engaged in battle here, Nightmare would have the advantage of both time and place. The figure before him resembled Odin, the king of the gods, exuding an aura of extreme danger, eyes filled with bloodthirstiness and cruelty. Any creature that invades my territory shall die, Nightmare declared, his voice dripping with malice. Whoever you are, you've made me really mad. With a sneer, Nightmare grasped a long sword, thick black smoke swirling around its blade, and slashed toward Orion with violent force. In an instant, Orion's eyes widened, the massive sword energy growing larger as it rushed straight at him. But he could not rely on his physical body his body was still in the real world, sleeping, unable to enter the dream world fully. The only thing Orion could rely on was his mystic arts.